Welcome to the Goods from the Woods. My name is Rivers Langley, and you know what the fuck time it is. You clicked on part two. This is 1994. <laughs> Still hanging out with at Seth Pomeroy, Hello. at Brand Dazzle, at Kyle Clark is Seth. rad, and we are moving into the summer of 1994. Ooh, Ooh, can we just let everyone know that off mic, uh, Rivers gave all of us a lot of caffeine and a lot of candy. <laughs> like we're stage children. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, I, I, I Judy Garland, Mickey yeah, Rooney, you yeah, all. And we're, on, yeah. we're on the Oaks <laughs> diet. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Thank you for the uppers, Rivers. Just <laughs> uh, uh, it all over all of our food. Yeah. And, see, and meanwhile, board. my brain's like, I wish every place would just get me hopped up like this. God, I know. Do you want to go to proportion? <laughs> candy. A proportion. I'm done. I've eaten too much. <laughs> and I sleep. Uh, yeah. And, and by the way, last episode I mentioned this was the year that Nutrageous and Hershey's Cookies and Cream came out. And uh, I forgot that I bought uh, yeah. that for everyone and was in the fridge. So now we're in the fridge like a gentleman. And now we got candy. Yeah. Uh, now he got uh, somehow Hershey's Cookies and Cream still around today. Just and I'm going to be honest. I was wrong. <laughs> Full size bar is great. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> you know what's great? Being wrong. Yeah. That's, right. uh, That's right. about candy. So uh, if you haven't. <laughs> <laughs> heard uh, part one uh, go click on that listen to it but uh, if you're just or joking. I respect that you're just like fuck the first yeah yeah it's so, yeah. summer and winter and nothing That's else right. yeah. <laughs> put the months on there so we, you know we're, we're coming off of uh, the crime of the century OJ Simpson and now we're moving into summer of 1994 we're starting off uh, as we mentioned New York Knicks beaten by the Houston Rockets four games to three in the 48th NBA championship and then June 24th <laughs> Whoa. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that got Seth. It got Seth. Seth. Got, got. I mean, I thought it was going to be Elton John, so I was really <laughs> frightened. I was like, wait, no. Oh, no. no. Someone is introducing the Lion King, and you don't think they're going to start with this? <laughs> what is the one example that you can pull I do. Yeah, I do a fake version of this in my apartment every morning. I, I think know, everyone does. out of my girlfriend. So, everyone yeah. does. Yeah. I know, I know this number. Got to. Yeah. Yeah. I know this the number. wake up song. <laughs> this is how I will wake up my children one day. <laughs> oh, yeah. I found out uh, weirdly the singing voice of Simba uh, is a man named Joseph Williams also known as the lead singer of Toto wait Whoa. really yeah wow Isn't that fucking huh. wild yeah so, JTT it's, it's not JTT it's the guy who sang uh, Africa man in of the house yeah. JTT talentless <laughs> you know, hat yeah you know him from man of the house <laughs> <laughs> Chevy Chase uh, that's so funny this was our uh, our fifth grade graduation song yeah. Oh, yeah. circle of life yeah we had to learn to dance to this and my sev- well my seventh grade confirmation song, not 1994, but Ooh. fun fact, <laughs> uh, I believe I can fly. <laughs> Yeah. Our Kelly. Yes. We sang our Kelly in church. Oh, that's wow. how it was confirmed. Oh, wow. wow. I mean, every part of it makes sense to me. Yeah, what I learned it? the sign language for it. Wow. wow. Oh, man. That's, that's more than R. Kelly would have done. This moment. That rule. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's he's going to do a crime here before the year's over. Uh, oh, but, uh, <laughs> 94? Oh, yeah. 94. Don't worry. Yeah. Man, I can't believe John May Wayne Casey missed the light. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> I could have turned it around. Maybe that I'd see it a little early. <laughs> yeah, Disney, that's his last wish. And they I hear just... this Lion King's really good. <laughs> I'd love to get a little taste. It's like Hamlet, but they're lions and they sing. Uh, Although I've heard it's ripping off a Japanese cartoon. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that they will eventually, I think, buy and bury. <laughs> Uh, yeah, as I uh, said on the show, uh, the day I saw The Lion King, one has to assume is the day it came out, uh, was a time in which I was uh, making up little cuss words because I didn't know how to cuss. Yeah. yeah. So I'd be like, oh, flippy flap or whatever. Yeah, yeah. My mom, there like a squirrel ran out in the road. My mom slammed on the brakes, and I 100% thought I was making this up. I went, oh, fuck. <laughs> and, uh, and, you made up the right first word. And, uh, and, and, uh, yes. and I, I nailed it. Uh, I stuck the landing oh. perfectly, and a, and a hand came from the front seat and yes. just fucking started hitting me. And I was like, what? Oh, what? <laughs> but like, I, awesome. as Sam pointed out, obviously I'd heard it somewhere, but I legit thought I was just yeah, making like, up a one, funny yeah. word. That's it's really funny. That's funny word. It's that's how word. I remember it's the funny. Lion King. It's, it's one of the best words. <laughs> it's very fun. You can no, that's around. why they try to keep it away. <laughs> that's yeah. Right. yeah, yeah. It's I use it at least one. 50 times a day. Oh, Mostly easily. in frustration. <laughs> I don't oh, realize I'm peppering it into things. Yeah. I think that the millennial mark is that we've yes. just we just say fuck all the time. All the time. Yeah. All, all the time. time. One time I was training a girl at a restaurant and she was like turned to me and went, uh, your parents didn't raise you right, did they? 
I went, nope. I, <laughs> welcome to my reality, lady. I say fuck. <laughs> my yeah. mom's dead. It's insane anyway, here's where the bread is. I like don't even hear it as a curse yeah, word, same. but I'm just like, you're, yes. what? Kevin Who Smith cares? has something. To I, I actually yeah. was thinking about this because I was thinking about Kevin Smith the other For day. Sure. That, that, that ultimately, maybe the two things that he will have brought the world are casually saying fuck and nobody batting an eye talking about cum anymore. <laughs> that's yeah. right. Yeah. Like that's, yeah. that's at the end of the day, yeah. Yeah. based on how he's set up that legacy, that is it. <laughs> that is <laughs> it. Yeah. Not a bad setup. Love doing both. Yeah. Yeah. Love yeah. love saying that. Love yeah. referencing that. But yeah. also, like, that's that's the run. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Sorry, Chasing Amy. Yeah, and established within two movies and then just repeated over and yes. over and over again. June 27th, 1994, Aerosmith becomes uh. the first band to allow their fans to download an entire new track. Wow. What? Really? Head First is the name of the song, it? and uh, this is actually a first listen. Oh, I, uh, it's got to suck so bad. Oh, I'm Nine sure. Nine Aerosmith, maybe. This is a great thing. You're crying. You're crying. You refuse to miss things. This you is get a, jaded. This yep. is a B-side. <laughs> from Get a Grip. Uh, oh, this boy. was the first song you could publicly download. Okay, oh, it's already boring. fucking terrible. Good God. Uh, there's no shut Although up and imagine dance. if you saw him oh, dancing, dancing down. down the side. I was just yeah. thinking, that's grounds to, you know. We're yeah. In, yeah, when right. he's doing the like wiggly man, it Listen, sounds different. We're, we're on record as being a no snitching podcast, but if you see Steven Tyler uh, t- t- dancing down your sidewalk, go ahead and call yeah. those cops. Why not? Uh, <laughs> so in that cop. rare case, yeah. it's fine. Um, but uh, yeah, the song's three minutes, 14 seconds long. It took 60 to 90 minutes wow. to download. Wow. That's still less time than I thought. Yeah, I know. Well, that's yeah, optimal. Same. Yeah. Wow. Um, first, baby. And uh, this is Steven Tyler's quote in the press release. If our fans are out there driving down that information superhighway, oh. then we want to be playing at the truck stop. So here's the deal. I feel <laughs> like you guys are all against that term. <laughs> and I would love to see it come back. Yeah, no. you do love it. I'm I sorry, <laughs> Webb. Uh, fuck you. Yeah, come on. It could be a highway. Yeah. Or perhaps a super highway. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's from the monologue of the cable guy. I've always loved the term, yeah. personally. Yeah. <laughs> Is that right? Is it, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, I love the cable guy. Oh, yeah. The big monologue he has at the end uh-huh. that it predicted the future of the oh, next 20 years yeah, after the haunting. movie yeah. yeah watching it now is um i've been thinking about something doing <laughs> yeah, it. yeah yeah I've been curious about rewatching The Cable Guy, but I'm oh, worried that really it will have to. some like prescient information for no, my future. Yeah. Matthew Broderick will tell me what day I die when he turns <laughs> the camera. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely some moments in that movie that you're like, ah, that had aged better than it should have. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> but that's, you know, the wackiness of all things is that if we all had to guess what would age well versus what hadn't in the modern world, it is a wild. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's right. uh, I'm going to confess, I don't hate. Aerosmith, and I don't know Ooh, when that happened. I hate yeah. because I used to hate Aerosmith, <laughs> and then woke up one day and was like, "There's things I hate way more than this. This is yeah. not. This is well, not, I can't yeah. put this on the hate harmless list." Now. I mean, of course, QAnon exists, now, <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but even well, as far as like rock band. bands yeah. go, yeah, I am yeah. finding that like there's weird rock bands that I hate now that I used to like. And then there's like, or not hate, but like, like I don't care about the Who at all anymore. No. I used to like the Who, and I was just like, I was zero interest. Whereas like, I'll still laugh at a at an Aerosmith song, or like yeah. listen to the first thirty seconds of Sweet Emotion well, and honestly, move on that, with my life. That's Sweet what I was going to say. Is a good song. My asterisk with Aerosmith is I'm not a huge fan. Sweet Emotion. Pulled into town in a police car. Yeah. It's one yeah. of the most just badass opening lines in rock. You're sort like, of like yeah. dancing down the sidewalk. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, no, no, no. Dancing down the sidewalk <laughs> He's is stupid. trying to recapture that plane. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It'll always be the soundtrack to me on a rock and roller coaster. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Oh, Pulled yeah. Pulled up yeah. to an ice cream shop on my little tricycle. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 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 Every album he's pitching different vehicles and locations. Yeah. They're like, hey, we know the gimmick. We get what you're doing. <laughs> On roller skates in an island ocean. Yeah. Like, like, yeah. None of us have any ideas, but those are bad. I want a pogo <laughs> stick at the pound. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Got a pogo <laughs> stick at the pound. The <laughs> Silverstone never uh, lived out there for every one of these. Yeah. <laughs> Got a face made of leather and my pants are made of silk. Yeah. He's all right, Steven. Yeah. 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 They just yeah, seem like, like as far mind. as classic rock guys go, they seem yeah. less annoying than most. Yes. I think yeah, the yeah. thing is that they're right past classic rock, but they still get claimed as classic rock. Yes. And that's where the divide comes. You're like, this is sort of fake Led Zeppelin and shit. And all the songs are about fucking. There's no ideas beyond fucking. <laughs> so, no, and my it. thing is, why well, would there need to be? <laughs> well, What's sure. the thinking man <laughs> song you want out <laughs> of this? <laughs> What's the thinking man Led Zeppelin song? I want song? them to tell me where to and how yeah. to walk. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> 
I want to, yeah, that's, right. <laughs> that's the main thing is about this. Forward motion. <laughs> With or without a run, a that's DMC. Right. That's right. Either way is fine. You're correct. You're correct. Yeah. Well, I need funky, to know what to know. do in an elevator. <laughs> yeah. I remember, too, getting a Love in an Elevator CD single, and, and it has the opening where he's like, uh, or the lady's like, oh, going down or something like that. And he's like, going down. <laughs> And it's like, I'm yeah. supposed to be like, blow jobs rule. Uh, These guys are crazy. Yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> this is my daughter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. it's like, recording that skit, you're just like, I'm so embarrassed that you're fucking, I'm related to you at all. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> like, the vocal booth going down. Yeah. <laughs> when Van Halen Can you take me home, please? When classic Van Halen disbanded, we needed somebody to fill that hole. <laughs> that's right. That's true. <laughs> David yeah. Lee Roth couldn't do it himself. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, July 3rd, 1994. The first Predator drone is flown in a test flight over El Mirage Airfield in the Mojave Fine. Desert, and uh, you hooray. know, hooray! That's not gonna that's not gonna be a thing later. But uh, anyway, yeah, for drones, no deal. let's yeah. fucking get to it. Forty eight hours, goddamn later. Oh, I love the shit out of this. <laughs> yeah, I thought this was like adult. Take life. it, Darius. <laughs> Every dad in America finally had some new music they could love. Yes, oh, yeah. And it is cracked re review by Hootie Remember and the fucking Blowfish. When, uh, Monica made out with one of the Blowfish on an episode of Friends. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, is that right? Yeah. She, Wait, has a hick, she has a hickey, and they're like, what'd you get that? And she's like, oh, that was from one of the blowfish, I suppose. Oh, wow. <laughs> what a fucking What a time. moment. I, yeah, that's great. I, Co- Courtney Cox making out with some from the Hootie the Blowfish is the flag of the 90s. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Yep. <laughs> I, yeah. I have a dis- making out on a koosh <laughs> ball. <laughs> I, I, I have a distinct Ooh. memory of, like, not understanding a joke uh, until years later that that turned out to be hilarious but at the time I just thought I took it at face value they were interviewing uh, Shirley Manson from Garbage on MTV yeah. and they go how did you come up with the name Garbage and she goes oh well Hootie and the Blowfish was already taken ah, <laughs> that's yeah. Yeah. but I just took that literally and I thought that bands were just given a name like Aww. like some machine <laughs> sometimes because I was are. fucking seven so I was like <laughs> oh yeah like a like a, a Man, piece of paper really got fucked yeah, yeah, yeah. that machine hated them is that, that a play on Voodoo dolls? It is, isn't it? Uh, it just uh, occurred to me like a year or two ago, and I was like, "Is there any confirmation maybe? of this?" Oh, All I know so. is that when they got famous, their big famous line was like, "Our band name is awful, but we are trapped with it." <laughs> <laughs> like, that was in many interviews yeah. I had heard Johnny Resnick go, "Like, look, we are aware that we have maybe the worst yeah. band name, but it is copyrighted, and we have a lot of material <laughs> built right. around it." Very, very fucking nineties <laughs> band name. That's like. <laughs> that guy was also like They're extremely the- attractive and ugly. Oh yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, well, it's also great because they had that the 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 guitar player that was like a heavy set guy with the really mm-hmm. straight long hair. I remember, and they would always shoot him at a very far distance <laughs> yes. in videos. The yeah. camera be spinning around. The Iris video. Like- he shot in an alley <laughs> yeah, that right. they're on the other side. Yeah, of. yeah, yeah right. <laughs> Put him down there. Yep. Light him. Uh, yep. <laughs> this record sold 21 million copies. Yeah, this sold more huge. than Dookie. It sold more than Dookie. Wow. Wow. His kids like this as much as parents because that. And and then yeah. my mother loved the this second too. album, they're so weirded out by their success, they make it a boner joke of a title <laughs> just to see if people yeah. will notice. Uh, frat boy style. Because they yeah. kind of yeah. seemed like they were also uh-huh. aware that Hootie and the Blowfish being successful was sort of a weird idea. <laughs> What's oh, it called? Sure. It's yeah. called uh, Fairweather Johnson. Fairweather <laughs> Johnson. I knew it was something Johnson. And then Scattered, Smothered, Covered, is this one then? Ugh. Or is that third one in review? This, okay. This right? is Cracked Review yeah. is Cracked the name yeah. of this yeah. record. And uh, yeah, so. Okay. Uh, yeah, I like that you always like the mid period. You're like, I do. I love it. Record I like- love when they're really coming into their own. I love it. I think it's success a- hasn't tainted the them art. and made them bland, but they've really kind of started to work together as I a unit. It. You should be a I like, manager. I like demos and the middle of careers. Those are literally yeah. the. Yeah. I like the excitement of starting or we're all working as a team That's really right. well. You're going to be an AR guy immediately. <laughs> hey, if someone wants to offer me a job, that is that job. He's I just doing have to job, be able folks. to take some days off completely to do podcasts. Yeah, that's right. Did, did everyone's dad have that record? Like, just to confirm. My mom had the record. As musicians, so we were no. not a hoodie yeah. house. Oh, oh, not a hoodie house. We we went hard for Dishwalla Ooh, Dish- and the wow. Spin Doctors and Matchbox Damn. Twenty. Okay. Blue cars, My maybe? dad's favorite band is the Animals, so oh, he hasn't okay. listened oh. to new music since Rod Stewart. Well, well, that, well, that's the thing. Like my dad <laughs> yeah. has this very like what you would expect: Beatles, yeah. Skinner, you know, 70s, 60s kind of thing. Big jump. Mm-hmm. REM, oh, uh, slightly less jump. Nirvana unplugged and Hootie and the Blowfish. Yeah, my that, dad that's, those are his the radio like, got him. Yeah, yeah, somehow that's, cool. <laughs> that's what happened. Yeah, but <laughs> played the sh- and and Cheryl Crow, Cheryl Crow too. For Cheryl that Crow, was my dad was a I huge mean, yeah, Cheryl Crow. Guy. My dad rode hard for all of the sort of like 
second tier Lilith Fair ladies. Oh, like, he was yeah, big, sure. My dad loved Natalie Merchant. <laughs> oh, like, yeah, of that course. Was, yeah. That was on his, and then Joan Osborne. Like those wow. two, ah. those were his fucking jams. That's so funny. Yeah, 10,000. Oh, and Tracy okay. Chapman, because she's a dad. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. She drives a fast car. We were, we were giving me one reason to stay here, Hats. <laughs> <laughs> Which, I forget what you were doing, Rivers, but you did some video once where it involved you singing, give me oh. one reason to stay here. Oh, I just remember yeah. seeing it and laughing for two days. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that was uh, me and uh, Justin Lentz, uh, where he's playing the drums and singing. That's what it was. And I'm playing guitar, and I just slowly creep up behind him and join in on singing, and he notices me and starts screaming, <laughs> <laughs> even though I've been playing the guitar the whole time. Right. Uh, that's awesome. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that's uh, that's July 5th. The next day, Forrest Gump is released. Man. Go on to be the best picture winner of the uh, subsequent Oscars. And I mentioned the park. Yeah. 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 John Wayne Gacy Forrest. missed Forrest Gump, and John Wayne Gacy, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I heard there's this yeah. Lieutenant Dan guy. I just got to see him. Yeah, yeah. I like to connect. <laughs> yeah. I, him and Anton Chikatilo were. <laughs> I didn't know I had a way in case he ready to go. It's the runner I've chosen for this episode. Uh, <laughs> big fan. We got, a, we got a game going here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, does anyone remember seeing Forrest Gump? And being I like, sure do. Oh, how yeah. hilarious. I saw it at the drive yeah, I'll be honest. Nintello was no longer allowed to like that movie. I love that movie. Me too. I Hell still, yeah, yeah. I still yeah. love it. I, yeah, I like again, I go to Bubba Gump several times a year at just. And par sometimes I just go to win the trivia yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah just I, to definitely. feel a little. Uh -huh. Yeah, I I have you know somewhere a uh, you know a thesis statement I'm prepared to write uh, about Forrest Gump because first of all it's the only thing about my home state that's not embarrassing. That's true. Um, yeah. So I have just this it one. That's a remotely positive. Run. Yeah, bingo. Oh, yeah. yeah. So like yeah, if yeah. I'm at work with like a tour from Australia and I say I'm from Alabama, I'm pray to God they mention Forrest Gump and not the black and white footage from the '60s. You know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and so usually like, yeah, yeah, Forrest Gump, we know that one. I'm like, yeah. And of course, they didn't film a single moment of Forrest Gump in Alabama. It was all shot in Georgia and South Carolina. But that is beside the point. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah but there's this, uh, you know, there is the the big criticism against Forrest Gump is that it is like the er boomer fantasy mm -hmm. of like if you just follow the fucking rules yeah. life will work out for you of course and the people who don't do that would be jenny who you know gets aids and dies yeah, at the end AIDS. because, a, because yeah. she's a loosed woman right yeah yeah but the counter argument to that would be lieutenant dan also tries to follow the rules yeah. and gets his shit fucked up and furthermore mm -hmm. forrest gump is not a guy who just blindly follows rules he follows what his mother told yes. him yeah so like when lieutenant dan is like god damn it gump don't go back into that jungle it's like yeah. no my mom said to run so i'm running fuck yeah. you he doesn't mm -hmm. so that criticism against forrest gump is one of those things where i'm just like it's there it's for sure there but it's at least balanced if you're willing to actually yeah. analyze all of the characters and uh -huh. not just forrest it's yeah. it's a movie that i think has problems but it is very easy to reduce it down in a way that i don't think is always fair if you're going to criticize a movie yeah mm -hmm. and it's, yeah. and i think the people's big problem with it was that it became wildly popular and it was fun and a lot of people like it and that's but also like if we're going to start yeah. tearing down the politics of popular movies when mm -hmm. do we get to burn every negative of back to the future yeah exactly well that's yeah. always my argument Same if you guys director. defend this fucking movie <laughs> yeah. and i don't even mean the chuck berry part i mean the fact that it is a capitalist love letter yeah where yeah. the solution yeah. to everything in life is that you get money <laughs> and uh -huh. some light incest <laughs> yeah well same director <laughs> so yeah. maybe it's, it's, yeah. it's yeah. yeah i mean and zemeckis mm. is kind of yeah. the the boomer director for sure like sure. so yeah. Yeah. And, he's, you know, he's diet Spielberg, yeah. as people have said. And, it's, yeah. and again, yeah. he's, he's it's not darker like, than Spielberg. And he's not a like a hack. I mean, because at the same time, in the midst of all this, he makes Who Framed Roger Rabbit, yeah. literally maybe one of the best films the best, yeah. humans will yeah. ever one do. One of the best of course, ever, yeah. ever, ever, ever. Yeah, yeah. So it's and again, I find both those movies wildly entertaining. But it is Which, always that double standard I have of where sure. it's like, look, if you're gonna take. Forrest Gump to chance we gotta burn down back it's, to the future and none of you assholes will it's, yeah. it is yeah, yeah. it is funny that uh, uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit is a better critique of power yes uh, than, uh, than either of those Gump. movies yes yeah yeah for sure <laughs> out of all of them for sure, for sure. Uh, but yeah. Uh, yeah man you know I, uh, I I still like that I also movie. don't think don't people care. run around going like and Jenny got what she deserved I feel like from Jump everyone's like she sure seems to get a raw deal yeah she yeah. got a bad yeah, fucking yeah. deal yeah, yeah. 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 I don't know yeah. I don't know if I know anyone personally who's like and the best part is that Brad gets what's coming right. <laughs> yeah that's right right it's yeah. so episodic that I think it played so good on TV. Yes, I and that's, yeah. that's, that's why I love it. I is. learned to play to guitar to that movie because yeah. my friend and I would so just on. sit after school Absolutely. and just, with guitars and just play along to every song. Yeah, my relationship with that movie, uh, in a, probably the biggest thing is the soundtrack. Yeah, that yeah, that's double great. CD, mm -hmm. and I, I found it at a yard sale when I was I think twelve or something like that, and it just has 
fucking everything you want to know. Yeah. yeah, starting with Elvis, going all the way up through. I think the last song on there is It Keeps You Running by the Michael McDonald era Doobie Brothers. It's, uh, is it Running on Empty? Or maybe, no, no, it. that's after that. You're right. You're yeah, right. and then On the Road Again by Willie Nelson is on there. Like, yep. It's got all this great shit. It's a, and so. it's a good, there's a lot of like FM gold in there that's yeah. real nice. Yeah, hell yeah. 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 Oh, and a bunch of good Motown and yeah. like, and you know like uh you know the, the four tops and uh, the, uh you know, stuff like that the meta game of i feel like 90s cinema was how fucking great is motown <laughs> yeah well yeah sure <laughs> oh, shit, the, right. the big chill opened that box in the 80s and then uh -huh, it's been never sure. been closed again since <laughs> yep i do wish they'd made the sequel to forrest gump oh because there is a book do you know oh, gump and sure. do you know about yeah. the gump and co i know the book yeah. do you know what, all the stuff in it no, no he goes to space i know he goes to space oh, i know that goes part to space. Monkey, yeah the, monkey. the first line the first, oh. of gump and co is he goes never let him make a movie about you because it's a meta commentary <laughs> about the it, this is the first book oh, and the movie rules. are very different yeah. like yeah. he spends a big chunk of time in the first book on an island of cannibals <laughs> Oh, whoa. And yeah. so they the part of it is that, that the meta of the second book is that they are now basing the continuity off of the movie, but he's also like upset about that because it's like changing <laughs> yeah, yeah. what his life was. Yeah. Oh, that rules. Yeah. It's really, it's an interesting thing. Winston Groom, shout out. He's a madman. Mm -hmm. um, let's get Tom Hanks to do that shit now. I mean, it'd be kind of interesting to do. Yeah. They should do it in the shitty uh, CGI motion captures that yes. got way into. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they do the technology they did back then, but on Tom Hanks, yes. they insert him in footage. From <laughs> yeah. But it's just his character from the Polar Express. <laughs> yeah, he's like, this all seems very unnecessary. <laughs> Just give me the talking monkey already. Right, let's go to space. I'm fine, yeah. fine with that. <laughs> fine with oh, yeah. that plot. I don't... Yeah, no he problem. does have a monkey. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, uh, July 8th, Supreme Leader Kim Il-sung dies in North Korea at the age of 82 from a heart attack. His son, Kim Jong-il, rises mm -hmm. to power. Uh, Kim Jong-il, fun facts that are 100% true about him. Uh, his first time playing golf, he hit 18 holes in one and retired. Oh, wow. Yeah, uh, yeah. He didn't poop. Uh, yeah. He nice. didn't have Good to. Him. Yep. And uh, uh, it's all that efficiency of his body. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> and uh, I believe on on the day he was born, a uh, uh, like a thousand rainbows appeared in the sky. I remember and that. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> yeah. for for more on North Korea, check out our episode we did on WCW in North Korea uh, with Daniel Radford a couple of years ago. Oh shit! That's Whoa. a that's a Pat Riley joint, and it is one of my favorite episodes <laughs> of the show. That is maybe the two most qualified people to have that come. <laughs> well, then they did a show about it uh, called Dark Side of the Ring on Vice. That's where what they, Dark Side of the Ring is about? Where they talked about, well, they did one episode, oh, one episode. on okay. Collision in Korea, which was still to date the largest professional wrestling event of all time because you oh. were it was mandatory attendance if you were a citizen of Pyongyang. <laughs> wow. And uh, How do we get that here? So, <laughs> dude, so much crazy shit happened. It's unbelievable. Listen to our episode. Check out The Dark Side of the Ring. Wow. July 14th. It's my eighth birthday, and Elliot Smith releases oh, Roman shit. Candle. Hey, yeah, massive, pretty man. good album, yeah. you guys. Yeah. You know yeah. the deal with that was that that was a demo tape that he didn't want anybody to hear. And yeah, his girlfriend, time Mary Lou Lord, gave it to Cavity Search Records. Is that and right? And they were like, "This is good enough. Can we just put it out?" And he was like, "Ah, fuck it. That's the only reason why he has a solo career." Wow. Yeah, I mean, he probably would have gone there anyways, but he was still in Heat Miser. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so that was like this weird thing. And oh that, wow! And that splintered their whole band. Because I didn't realize that's like, what Elliot split him up. Yeah, oh, that's the beginning of it. Either or was recorded. This is interesting. Either or was recorded the same time as Heat Miser's big major label record. So he's making his seminal record that changes oh, his shit. fucking life while they're making a throwaway major label record. And they wow. Oh, and so man. that, and he's like trying to let the other guy write more songs and he's trying yeah. to help him write. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's because he feels bad, but yeah. he secretly is like, and, I don't want to be in this fucking And band. that record rules, though. Uh, Mike City Sons. Mike City Sons right. is good. It's but, great. Neil Gus is a great song. Let, let, yeah. awesome. let us be honest. Plain Clothes Man is the best fucking oh, song yeah, on the record. And yeah. the hidden track, which is basically an Elliot Smith solo song. Yeah, exactly. Um, But yeah, I, I love that shit. I'm a huge <laughs> fan. His music's not all that sad. Everybody, actually. yeah, it's, it's really sad. brilliant. Yeah, creative. Yeah, it's I, there's a lot of fun stuff to yeah, it. So many. It's sort of like Joy Division. Like any of the things that get tight or the Cure shit that gets titled is sad. That is actually like. Mostly a lot of up tempo fun totally. times. Oh, so yeah. Yeah. the Cure. Yeah, I I feel yeah. like I got sold a Brussels sprouts Same. level 100%. of bill on yes. the Cure, where people are like, oh, it's mm. this bummer music. Oh, Brussels sprouts aren't good. It's like, <laughs> yeah, no, right. they're fucking the Roast best it. vegetable. Brussels sprouts are great. Yeah, and yeah. the Cure is one of the best bands of the eighties. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. They are a band yeah. that I shit on all through high school, and are now probably one of my three favorite bands of all oh. time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they oh. have really fun songs. Even the sad ones are fun. Yeah. yeah, I should say I have an amazing Elliott Smith live story that I have to tell. Is so yeah, please. The same place, three twenty eight Music Hall, and it was it was figure tour and the electric so he had a full band it was the first full band tour so they're about to go on stage opening act already played they're about to go on stage and all the electricity goes out 
And oh, so shit. there's the room, the show was sold out. So there's this full of fucking people, and it's just people are starting to get louder and louder. Yeah. And finally, uh, Elliot Smith comes out with a guitar, and he's like, everybody has to be very quiet so I yeah, can yeah. speak. So everybody shuts up, and he's like, I can't see my hands, so I can only play so many songs, but I'll do everything I can, you know? Yeah. And we'll see if electricity comes back on, but everybody has to be very quiet or you're not going to yeah. hear me, you know? So he sat down, and oh my little God. by little, the electricity came back. So the piano Oh, came my out. fucking he's God. He's playing piano halfway yeah, through. Yeah. That's cool. And then the electricity all comes back on after he's probably played like 15 songs. Wow. And he goes, okay, we'll be right back. And they go back, and they come back and play the whole full band. Oh, my God. That's they, amazing. And they played like 20 oh, songs. They covered I Me Mine by uh, fucking the Beatles. And it was oh, like, shit. it was so Fuck. fucking mind-blowingly great there's a yeah, bootleg awesome. out there somewhere but it sounds like shit but like yeah, yeah. it was one of the wildest coolest experiences i've ever had in my phone yeah. that is super cool Damn. so lucky that i saw that you don't have yeah, to go so to concerts amazing. after that you're done so lucky. that's great i mean it's insane oh, but anyways yeah. that's amazing yeah i forget i saw oh, some i get sad every me. time i hear another story of elliot smith being a cool guy yeah. <laughs> totally it's a real oh yeah continues yeah. to be a further and further yes. bummer mm. yeah was, like because yep. I, I think that like even at that time, was reduced to being sort of a sad guy totally, stereotype yeah. and stuff like that. And you, too. you listen back now and you're like, yeah. oh, never mind. This was a super funny, really brilliant guy. And we totally. all fucking dropped the ball on <laughs> totally, this. Totally, yeah. totally. Yeah. I just, uh, this is nothing to do with 94, but I just saw the, the new Courtney Barnett documentary the oh, other yeah. day. Ooh. And she was there for Q&A. And uh, the first interview I've ever seen in my I life. I have a I, Courtney Barnett story that I can tell you really? off mic some. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, fun. She's a, she seems like such a sweetheart, but people would ask her a question. She'd be like, I don't know. It's a great question. I wish I had an answer for it. I just don't know. She yeah, said, yeah. I don't I'm know a, you to uh, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> I was Huge like, fan and have heard that several times. I was yeah. like, girl, you, I, you'll you never be on a podcast. Yeah, you got to give them something. You got to yeah. give them something. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Definitely got a good story. <laughs> That's yeah. It is pertinent. Perfect. <laughs> well, props to the insecure acoustic guitar singing <laughs> yeah. superstars out there. <laughs> yeah. uh, the next day, uh, and I wanted to shout out uh, our friend at Harry underscore hood, uh, July 15th, Angels in the Outfield is oh, released yeah. by Walt Disney Pictures. JGL, yeah. Danny Glover, <laughs> Tony Danza. Yep. Christopher Lloyd. Christopher Lloyd. Unfucking stoppable. Uh, <laughs> Angels in the Outfield, one of the perennial. My teacher in elementary school has a hangover, and yep. we need to watch yeah, yeah. something movies uh, yes. that was just constantly popped into a, a media cart. Mm -hmm. uh, but. Uh, <laughs> I went because, you know, he suggested that when I was like, oh, yeah, Angel in the Outfield. I read the thing and I had forgotten the whole point of the movie. Yes, I was about to say the same thing. Good. <laughs> is that Joseph Gordon Levitt's father is so negligent that he has fallen into the foster care system <laughs> and he finally meets up with his dad and he's like, when are we going to be a family again? Ooh. And his dad says, when the angels win the pennant. Which is his way of saying, fuck off, fucking shitty kid. Yeah. Never. Yeah, fucking I should have pulled never. out. Oh, yeah. I should have pulled yeah. out, kid. Uh, and then the the other wow. funny detail that I had forgotten is that during the final game of the season, uh, none of the angels show up to help the team. And later on, it's revealed by Christopher Lloyd's character that uh, championships must be decided without the angels intervention, <laughs> <laughs> which leads me, fair. leads me to believe that God was losing too many, uh, you know, degenerate gamblers to the devil. So <laughs> he was like, all right, I can't, <laughs> I can't be fucking stepping into this <laughs> yeah, one. We got uh, rules here. That sounds to me like the Buffalo Bills has some angel help. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's why the that's why the Bills didn't win any Super Bowls. Oh. <laughs> Angels can't intervene. <laughs> the funniest thing about the Angels and Outfield thing, though, is like it ends with the pennant, not mm -hmm. the series. Yeah, yeah. That year, because well, the kid says when the air, the dad says when the Angels win the pennant. The pennant. Yeah. He, he doesn't even say the World Series. Funny enough, that year the World Series didn't fucking happen because Major League Baseball went on strike. <laughs> Wow. Oh, yeah. oh, that's the lockout year. That's the yeah. yeah. So yeah, the ML which I'm aware of because of the Klosterman book. Yeah, and and <laughs> the worst thing about the strike, the team managers wanted to install salary caps, and the yeah. union was like, "No, fuck you, pay people what they're worth and shit yeah. like that." Uh, but basically, they wanted to create some sort of uniformity among uh, baseball teams, which. I think could be done by limiting the fucking owner's paycheck, but yeah. I digress. Uh, More but, Bobby Bonillas. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> or put baseball on free TV, you fucking assholes. Yes, yes. It's America's pastime. I shouldn't have to watch Tom Warner to watch the goddamn Dodgers. But yeah, anyway, uh, point is uh, that fucked the Montreal Expos because they were having their own Angels in the Outfield yep. season. Oh, <laughs> and oh, that is what Sorry, eventually oh. started the landslide that led to them uh, going out of business and becoming the Washington Nationals. <laughs> God, I'm trying to remember his name. <laughs> Jonah Carey, I think it is, from Grantland has a great book about the history of the Expos. Oh, the Expos, yeah. Yeah, well, it's a tragic mm -hmm. team, and this is like the beginning of the end. They were on course to to 
they were I think they were five games ahead of Atlanta, who yeah. was just on fire in the mid nineties. And uh, this is the the strike is when my father stopped watching baseball. When a lot of people stopped watching baseball, yeah. they maintain that was the death of baseball's America's sport. Was that wow. and that then lockout. weirdly, yeah. like I mean, not weirdly, I guess it makes perfect sense. Me by extension, that's when I quit yeah. watching too. Like I was the yeah, biggest same. Braves guy, and I loved the crime dog, Fred McGriff. Man, that guy was fucking awesome. And of course, yeah, Glavin, Maddox. Like it was a, it was the only good, really great time to be a Braves fan, except you know when they they won the series later. It, anyway. I didn't. I don't think I ever really came back to baseball. Truly, my dad has just now started to watch yeah. again. Uh, but I think that just has more to do with him being retired than anything else. But yeah, yeah. we so. had we had Cal Ripken Jr. Doing oh, his of thing course. In the late nineties. It's the only reason people in Maryland were still paying attention. Yeah, like, our team's yeah. not that good. But uh, man, <laughs> he yeah. doesn't miss a game. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Neither will I. Yeah. Neither yep. will I. Oh, <laughs> yeah. For more on Cal, check out our Billy Ripken fuckface baseball card episode with Jeff. That yeah. is a great episode. Yeah. Do you, do you get into Hi- when, when his mom got kidnapped? We got into that story that, is wild. That is also a, a, a Pat Helmed episode. That is uh, yeah, it, that is I have listened to that episode. It is a masterpiece. It's, uh, Pat it's is really wild. like like it's it's you feel like Pat is a, a fucking radio DJ in the early night <laughs> just smoking a tiny cigarette. <laughs> yeah. you know, people were eighteen hours in. We're finally getting to the creamy center of this story, <laughs> <laughs> and it's great because yeah. Jeff May is there, and I have no clue what they're talking about. Oh, yeah. So I'm just like, yeah, man, <laughs> rock and roll. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the same day, Angels in the outfield comes out now here's my banger of the summer true lies is oh, released yeah. that same yeah. fucking weekend hell seen yeah that forever. kind of the weirdest cameron movie maybe well, it's the weirdest but you know what i found this out reading about this at the time it was the most expensive movie yes. ever made yes and then it would be beaten by titanic you know it was the wow. most expensive movie ever made before that Oh, well, Terminator was, 2. Was it Terminator 2? Yeah, yeah, he, I he did he it three doing. separate Man, times, and they were hits every time. That's why wow. he can do that's whatever why he, can do. he wants. Yeah. That's why yeah. Avatar is yeah. Uh, yeah. True Lies is also based on a French comedy. Really? Yes. There is a simple French uh-huh. comedy about a wife who doesn't know her husband is a secret agent. There is no Harrier fight towards the end. No? No? Nobody goes <laughs> yeah, uh, into a building on a missile? It, it is a like kind of fun French farcy movie. Mm-hmm. Like, like, And then it turns it. James Cameron's like, yeah, I'll get the rights to that, and then this is what I'm going to do. I mean, that does sound like the American interpretation of what we would do to it. Oh, yeah. I suppose the other question is, how many other of the most uh, expensive movies of all time contain Tom Arnold? Oh, I, <laughs> oh shit. That's in my notes. I said, truly Tom Arnold's high watermark. He had divorced Roseanne on yeah. April 18th. So this was... Without knowing it, you know, you don't know, uh, you don't you don't know you're, you're at the I top mean, until it's he gone. Does move on know? to make Carpool after this, which I oh, would call the second and, apex. And meet the stupids. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, all, every movie we have described so far, I've seen in theaters. <laughs> Just if you're wondering what kind of non-discerning cinephile young Kyle was, I don't think we've talked about a movie yet that I did not see in the theaters. And when I say theaters, I mean <laughs> see me driving. <laughs> uh, July seventeenth, nineteen ninety four, Brazil wins the World Cup beating Italy 3-2 to two at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. I forgot that was in America. Were people America. there? Uh, yes, it was the best attended World Cup ever. Really? Uh, yeah, because it's like America. It's like, yeah, yeah, we're going vacation to America to a city where, you know, most, yeah, most yeah. people it's actually uh, a smart really. plan on their own yeah i know yeah, it's yeah. A, yeah i mean it's it beats the shit out of qatar uh you know which yeah. is what they're doing next time we're getting some soccer thing sometime in the next few oh, years here yeah. that's the extent of my i know we're getting the yeah, olympics was, that's the one yeah. i know yeah uh but well, yeah and that's happening and the game ended yeah. zero to zero and i just ha- want that mcdonald's promotion to happen again come on if we really believe in <laughs> 80s revivals still <laughs> then give me a guy i need two sorry i gotta distract this for a minute because oh, yeah. i gotta cry in here this is Really, everybody here is jam. Yeah. <laughs> if you remember, the reason that the fucking 84 Olympics fucked McDonald's so much is because it was that was the LA Olympics where the Soviet countries all refused to go. Yeah. 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 So we're in a situation where there's a real good chance Ooh. Russia would not go. Yeah. Which means that we once again could fucking dominate shit like men's gymnastics that nobody <laughs> yeah. wins but Russia. Yeah. And we can get way more Big Macs. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. What a patriot you are. Yeah. Like, I'm just saying, we could win more medals, fuck over McDonald's yeah. and have the Olympics be more fun to watch. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, and displace all our homeless yeah. people. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. So then, well, what if we cook them in the McDonald's? <laughs> cook them Are in you the running McDonald's. for mayor? What's going on yeah, right now? I am winning. <laughs> Rick, Rick that's Caruso. The dark part. <laughs> yeah, I, I pitched Soylent Green and my numbers went up. <laughs> Rick Caruso, how did you get in here? Um, 
<laughs> uh, but yeah, this uh, the World Cup, by the way, that last game ended 0-0, zero to zero, and they just had a shootout, and it's the first time the World Cup ever ended in penalties. Bummer for, <laughs> yeah, for, yeah, for Italy. Uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, it's the, it made Brazil the first nation to win four World Cup titles, and they would do it again, uh, I think, in 2002. If you can't get to World Cup 1994, we'd like to point out that the preliminary matches for World Cup 2010 have already begun. And luckily enough, good seats are still available. McDonald's, proud sponsor of the world's biggest soccer game. Even prouder sponsor of the world's smallest. July 23rd, we mentioned the steroid trial ends with the Eastern District of New York uh, finding Vince McMahon not guilty. Thank God. Yep. And then this is weird because I went to find these candy bars and there was one other item I was looking for. Was it steroids? And no, no, I wish. Oh, boy, no. <laughs> yeah, just all shooting anabolics. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Talking. Like, no more energy drinks. Just steroids. <laughs> <laughs> on goods in the woods. This is a thing. Tijuana for the <laughs> HD. Oh, yeah. 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 I thought no. you were committed to this pod. <laughs> 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 How many hours can you do? Yeah. <laughs> uh, but this is a thing that used to be so ubiquitous. And I went to two 7-Elevens and one grocery store and did not see it anywhere. But August 1st, 1994... Wrigley's Winter Fresh Gum is. I don't released. think they make it anymore. Fucking, it's hard to find. Where yeah. the hell is the double mint? Where's the spearmint? Where's the big red? Where's the juicy fruit? Where's the Winter okay, Fresh? So. Dollar Tree. Yes. Dollar Tree is the only place uh, that you can find Target it. Target to a lesser extent sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Do- uh, yes, yeah. but Dollar Tree is your biggest money. Dollar uh, stores in general. I, I yeah, went yeah, to yeah. Ralph's. I went to Vaughn's. Mm-hmm. I went to two 7-Elevens. None of them had a... Weirdly, they had Trident and Orbit, which Th- is made by Wrigley. But yeah. still, yeah. you're like, I mean, where the fuck? I'm a Trident boy, so I, I have a bias, but... Usually you can get like a juicy fruit or a mm-hmm. or a double mint at most places, but like winter fresh. No, nope. I used nope. winter fresh was my jam I didn't, as a kid. Yeah, yeah, I didn't yeah. see juicy fruit. I didn't see any of the the classic. I need to take a shit in this restroom. Here, I'll buy this uh, yeah. gum products. It's, it's Dollar Tree's yeah. where it's at. Because yeah. I'm, I'm a big red girl. I'm a big, oh, big red girl. Oh, red oh, shit. Controversial oh. gum choice. Yeah. I know. No, I love That's big right. red. Yeah. Oh, the number of times I've been somebody's been like, hey, get a piece of gum. And then I'll offer them a big red. And they go, no, <laughs> it's thanks. It's uh, I was about to say yeah. the exact same thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> menthol cigarette of gum. <laughs> You're <laughs> like, what? <laughs> nah, fuck. I'll find other, no, it's other gum around. Yeah. No, I noticed <laughs> recently. It has one gram of sugar in it. It is not sugar free. Oh, okay. I was like, good. wow, okay. Wait, Good one gram is a lot right. for that little bit. Oh, my yeah, God. I know. I was shocked at that, too. Shit. I have not stopped eating it, though. I was always, uh, I go, <laughs> spearmint, big red, juicy fruit, double mint, winter fresh, last in the lineup for yeah, me. Yeah. But, uh, really? Yeah, but it was always, it was weird. I, I kind of vaguely remember that. Like, oh, there's a new, a new one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The temperature inside your mouth is 98.6 degrees. <laughs> the same as a sweltering jungle. Yeah. But the temperature inside a winter fresh mouth tastes. Winter fresh gum from Wrigley's. Icy cool flavor. Icy cool bread. That lasts. Uh And lasts. And lasts. You know what I'm talking about. Try winter fresh gum for icy cool bread that lasts. Much, much, much. Winter fresh mouth tastes yeah. much wow. My dad yeah. hated it. My dad hated it. He's like, it's bullshit. Gum does not cool your mouth off. He's right. He is scientifically, your father is completely sad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not chewing this propaganda. He Don't give him that much credit. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go to his head. <laughs> what other ideas do I have that are right? <laughs> uh, August 7th, 1994, 90 miles southwest of Seattle, a resident of Oakville, Washington, reported that a translucent gelatinous substance had rained down in the night she expressed concern that it may have caused her and her mother to become ill and speculated that it may have been the reason her kitten died more people started getting sick there were reports of people developing flu-like symptoms from contact to the blobs uh samples were collected and tested by a local doctor who initially stated that the substance contained human blood cells but further testing by the department of ecology refuted these results as tests showed that there were no nuclei present 
several theories were given by residents, including wondering whether the substance might have been waste from a commercial plane's toilet or whether it may have been particles of deceased jellyfish that had evaporated and been incorporated into a rain cloud. I don't think that happened. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, no, yeah. No, <laughs> of course. no theory was ever proven to be correct, but for a time, the incident received coverage in several media outlets, including the New York Times, and a segment was produced about it for an episode of Unsolved Mysteries and also mm. Monsters and Mysteries in America. And they are still known today as the Oakville Blobs. And there is still no Oakville explanation blobs. for this shit. I'm pretty <laughs> sure Randy Quaid just crop dusted. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Shitters full. <laughs> pretty sure that's what Yeah, happens. he took that ID4 plane. And I'm just going to throw <laughs> two words out there that solve this and close the book. I'm just going to say them. Space come. Let's move on. Yeah. <laughs> yep. He's He's yep. I think that's the actor. <laughs> that's accurate. We'll be getting pictures Don't. of this and that. Let's go real yep. soon. Do, yep. do y'all remember? <laughs> Let's go space come. <laughs> There's space oh, come God, everywhere. It's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Did, <laughs> it's full of space come. <laughs> Did anybody here uh, in science class when you're uh, studying uh, non Newtonian uh, uh, solids or whatever do the oobleck thing where you had corn starts to water? And then they would put green dye in it. Mm -mm. If you do that, it's basically when you clasp it in your hand, it's like solid. And then as soon as you open your hand, it just like melts back it down oh, to the liquid. Yes. Yeah. And they call it oobleck. And Ooh. it's like an old science thing that, you know, science cool. teachers do. I, I remember in, I believe it was Miss Lockhart's class doing that. And she explained it as a thing that fell to earth from space that we were now trying to figure out what it was. And yeah. they passed it around and we all played with it for a little while. And then she was like, oh, it's actually just cornstarch and water. And then sat us down and was very seriously like, listen, y'all. I would never give you anything that fell from outer space. Just so you know, I wouldn't try to hurt yeah. you like that. Like, Aww. like just sat us nice. down for a real that is moment. Legally covering their ass. Yeah, yeah. yeah just yeah, letting yeah. us know. Some trauma in her life. Well, space it's things stranger <laughs> alien danger. I like. Yeah. 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 Look, <laughs> shit comes from space. We probably shouldn't touch it. That's yeah. what I'm, I'm yeah. telling you now. Uh, Don't let anybody put anything in your asshole. <laughs> 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 things fall out of the sky. Don't put them up your ass. <laughs> yeah. <Hey>. Fucking bullshit. <laughs> yeah. Talk yeah, to your parents. You can't watch me all the time. I'll do what I want. I'm looking up at the sky all day. Oh, just I'm, waiting. Oh, her, 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 her class was... Uh, Step one, pick up objects. Step yeah. two. Space calm. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you get space calm. It's the only way. Her, her <laughs> her mistake for filling is full of sugar and caffeine. Put a satellite up your ass. Throw You're, so much cum at a cat that you kill it. That's right. You're a kid. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's Hijinks. Remember that? <laughs> Little rascals. Yeah, just kids getting into Stuff. <laughs> Specifically, come get into it. Uh, <laughs> her class, I still remember. She uh, she out. told us, "Don't stick anything in your ear bigger than a football." Wow. Still remember that. Tough to fair. Uh, Seems uh, like. And also, uh, she was a marine and had fought in Panama. So when we studied uh, the countries of the world, we focused on Panama heavily. Because she uh, spit on the ground every time she said Panama. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. She <laughs> or she like trying to get back there. I, I don't know. It seems like she didn't mind it too much. I think you know it was her expertise. She was Look. Well, the point is, yeah. she had more fun down there than Noriega did. Um, but uh, <laughs> August 11th, 1994, Peter Cushing dies at the age of 81 from Aww. cancer. 22 years later, the unholy neuromancers of Disney would play around with his dead body in Rogue One. It looks so, so bad. funny. <laughs> it looks yeah. so funny. I love it. I, I used to hate it. Now Same. I love it. It looks like a PlayStation <laughs> 2 game. He looks <laughs> like no, <laughs> it's, it's, it's Jurassic Park. In that he looks 90% like Peter Cushing, but yes. they had to fill out the DNA, and they did it with the scary vultures from the Splash <laughs> Mountain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like sometimes Ooh. he's like this battle station operational, but other times he's like everyone's got a laughing place. <laughs> I know. <laughs> There's one close up where you're like, oh, oh, cut, cut the cut, please. Yeah. He makes a face and literally his nose gets very sharp. Oh. And I just remember thinking, I'm like, is he a demon bird? <laughs> 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 you know, he used to in life wear a glove when he smoked cigarettes so that he didn't, his hand didn't smell like cigarettes oh, when he would yeah. talk to people. I would still gentleman. be smoking if I had caught that. I would have got at least another year out of it. So, uh, yeah. That's my smoking <laughs> glove. Like, like, just don't mind me, the man in gloves. That's in a corner of a bar. type of Englishman we lost. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. right. It's like the cigarette smoking gentleman. Yeah, you do need an accent, I think, to wear a glove and smoke. I don't, yeah. oh, I don't think I sure. can do it. Don't, don't let me do it. Uh, that same day, Daniel Cohn sold a CD of Sting's Ten Summoners Tales. Oh, uh, which is, fuck. This is so oh. lame. Uh, this is <laughs> this is my dad music. This is uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, he sold a CD of this uh, to a friend in Philadelphia who used his credit card to spend twelve dollars and forty eight cents on it, plus shipping costs. 
This was the first ever encrypted online transaction. Oh, oh wow. wow. <laughs> it was to buy this record. If I ever lose my faith in How you. How boring this shit is. <laughs> I love <laughs> early police. I love Same. actually all this police. Is, oh, it's yeah. weird Man, when I learned I like the police. Yeah, they're being, great. But I thought I thought they sucked because of Sting's whole yep. career. I got to yeah. say, yep. the hook on He's this is, uh, is pretty strong. I'm not going to lie. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah. This is maybe the apex <laughs> adult contemporary song. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. that, that same kind of weird sampling we heard on the Sheryl yeah. Crow earlier, except with all of the coolness removed. Mm -hmm. so. yeah. This yeah. sounds like an outdoor mall. Yeah. <laughs> it, yeah. Sounds it sounds like a man's divorce. <laughs> I think everybody at some point had the best of the police and Sting. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. The, the most pictures, yeah. insidious yeah. album ever yeah, where you're evil, like, evil thing. like, this is so good. And then you what start the hitting fucker. them fields of barley and you're like, you uh, fucking uh, out. Uh, lose Stuart you Copeland <laughs> and you lose the country. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Uh, the last thing I did in Nashville was see Stuart Copeland play with the symphony. I saw, <laughs> I saw, I saw, that I saw awesome. Oysterhead years, years I saw, ago. Oh, yeah. I saw we were at the well. same Oysterhead show oh, yeah. where Stuart Copeland was on acid. Was he? He's such a silly fucking dude. He's like a real goof. He was in a like yellow shirt shorts, yellow headband, no shirt, big glasses strapped yeah. to his head, between songs just going, yeah! Yeah, dude. <laughs> like, Les Claypool, totally. visibly a little embarrassed. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Trey Anastasio gave him the acid also on it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah oh like, yeah. Like, yeah. He's like a science teacher <laughs> so on <a> fucking berserk. <laughs> uh, that, I was at that show, Trey had on his guitar, he had this special guitar made uh, called the Matterhorn mm -hmm. that has a gigantic elk <laughs> antler coming out of it that he has somehow wired into a bass theremin. Oh my god. So while he's playing guitar, he's you just like woo, woo, woo. no, it's bass, so it's woo. going Wah, 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 wah. Oh. It's fucking Ooh. dumb. And uh, I was so stupid. I love it. I, oh, yeah. oh, yeah. And I was sober, and uh, the people I were with were very much on uh, psychedelics. And yeah, yeah. I looked over at my friend, and he was like, No. <laughs> no, because he thought knows his audience. Because he thought it was like growing out of him, and he was like, "No, yeah, no. yeah." Oh, and he had to leave. Uh. <laughs> I, I had two things that one, at least that wasn't the only kind of annoying guitar on stage. Because Les Claypool had his banjo bass. <laughs> oh no, you oh. mean the Whamola? <laughs> yeah, sir? that's the one. Oh, yeah, the, so I'm not enough of a Primus guy to know it has a proper Christian. Yeah, name. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's the the intro of the South Park. The, oh, yeah. And then the other one, I similarly had people around me on drugs. Uh, it was some hippie guy I didn't know personally, but he was thrilled I was there so he could tell me his observations about Trey. Oh. One of which is that he loves Trey because he always knows it's him, even though he's always wearing a different shirt, but he knows it's him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I feel about just about everyone. That is a sentence that I think about constantly. Like just a two-shirt trickster. <laughs> yeah, that's it like, was just, this he's dude. always changing that shirt. Like, I'm not going to recognize it's him, like, but I know the rest of your body <laughs> besides your shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Some silly fool. That the rules. man has bright red hair and a bright red beard and glasses. Yeah, like you, could, you remember when him. PBS held the press conference for Fish Breaking Up? Because that's another <laughs> thing I was thinking about. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have to do the 2004 episode, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> I watched that shit on vacation in yeah. Florida. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, we got our first online transaction. and That's how we got here. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's, right. <laughs> that's how it all started. <laughs> and the uh, the next day, Woodstock 94, baby. Oh, uh, August 12th. Oh, this is not the, the murder good rape one, right? Yeah, this is 99. No, this is no. Evil. Only, only this is people fuck up. 99, oh. terrible. 94, top nine. Okay. Only, yeah, yeah, yeah. only two people died at that one, and one of them was from diabetes. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I had the CD-ROM of Woodstock anyway. 94. <laughs> it's, uh, that's got the Green Day mud fight. <laughs> and, it has, and the Primus mud uh, fight. And, the Primus mud, and, and I challenge <laughs> anybody listening, because I've done this a couple of times, go back and watch the Nine Inch Nails performance from Woodstock 94, and you literally watch someone become a rock god over the course wow. of 90 oh, minutes. Yeah, cool. From the start of that set to the By the end, he's covered in dirt. He looks <laughs> fucking crazy. Oh, yeah, There's just chaos sound happening. He's whipping around. You're literally like, oh, this is... This sold every Nine Inch Nails shirt in the 1990s in this hour. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Fuck yeah. That's awesome. Like it's, it is, I love watching a good rock performance, and that is truly one of those ones where I'm like, okay, like, yes, I can see how a bunch of guys were like, I'm just going to smoke cigarettes and try to be this forever <laughs> yeah, yeah. now. I'm just going to try to do that. <laughs> uh, I'm going to just kind of run through the lineup uh, just quickly. Yeah. Uh, if I miss one, let me know. First of all, Orleans was there. Yeah. <laughs> which oh, yeah, is they were. Because it was 1994, and that's the one win, that's the four month window where that happened. <laughs> But no, but like Orleans is from the seventies. They're like a fucking yacht rock. Well, because they couldn't get because they were getting trying to get like Crosby, Stills, and Nash and shit. And everybody said no. Yeah, yeah they were trying to like bring back the yeah. original Woodstock. 
Fuck. We got uh, Blues Traveler, Jackal. Fuck. Wait, uh, I'm going to count how many of these bands I've seen live subsequently. Oh. Cheryl Crow, Collective Soul, Candlebox, Violent oh. Films, uh, D-Light, uh, playing over at the Rave oh. Stocks. I'm going to be honest, that's so far the highlight. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Saturday, Joe Cocker making a return from yeah. 1969. Affordable. Block. Okay, Saturday is fucking strong. Joe Cocker, Blind Melon, Cypress Hill, Rollins Band, Melissa Etheridge. Oh, I just want to go to this. That's just the day yeah. of that's yeah, every that's artist fun. on that list I would <laughs> happily go see. Yeah. Crosby Stills and Nash, Nine Inch Nails, Metallica, Aerosmith playing presumably their downloadable <laughs> song. I really hope they opened with that one. The Cranberries, Primus, Salt and Peppa, and then this is the funny one: the band featuring. Hot Tuna, Bruce Hornsby, Roger McGuinn, uh, Rob Wasserman, and Bob Weir. So they cl- they crammed so the entire first Woodstock <laughs> yeah, right into there. one. I'd also still watch that. I bet that was a good set. Yeah, yeah. Hot Tuna? Come yeah, on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Fucking yeah. the band minus Robbie. Yeah. The, yeah. Uh, and I replaced mean, by the rest of them. And replaced by <laughs> everybody that, else. Is that what that version of the band was? He wasn't At that it? time, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was after Jericho and stuff like that. And that's so that's a, all Saturday? Nice. Yeah. That's, that's an Saturday. insanely solid line. Yeah, that's a good ass That's all Saturday. And then Sunday, Country Joe McDonald. You know, he did the give me an F, give me you, you he mm-hmm. had to uh <laughs> then uh arrested development hell yeah the allman brothers hell yeah spin doctors hell yeah mm-hmm. traffic fuck yeah uh yeah. bob dylan love it who yeah. i forgot was at that uh red hot chili peppers porno for pyros peter gabriel and then, what's like 94 rules yeah, yeah. now yeah. now <laughs> this is like the i like everything on this. dude <laughs> santana jimmy cliff the neville brothers what fucking this is just a bonner yeah and, and, and then Gil Scott Heron was also there. What? Yeah. That seems Damn. so strange. That's that so like, good. Yeah. Really so hard. I'm That's like. That's cooler than most of the Coachellas. <laughs> yeah. yeah, <laughs> yeah 100%. It's, it's yeah, a wider for variety sure. for sure. It's like a goddamn Spotify Discover Weekly. Wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of weird <laughs> shit mashed up together. I mean, yeah. it's not quite. Because uh, I do believe you got. The Indigo Girls were on 99, right? Or do I always get that wrong? No, I don't think so. Okay, damn. I always want to think ICP and the Indigo Girls played a festival together (laughs) once. No, because famously in 99, they only had three women. And it was was Jewel, Cheryl Crow, and Alanis. Alanis And all three of them got... Show us your tits! Yeah, yelled at right. them, mm-hmm. yeah, Boy, because yeah. Uh, fucking by '99 we were we were we were done. That's we the were past the glory in '94. The attitude yeah. era of the world had begun. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but it the outfield era is over. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. Your dad, your mom, you're not getting back together. There's no pin it. There's no baseball. By '99, we're like we're unstoppable. <laughs> yeah. Nothing will change. Right. We Here want, we go. We want to see tits, and that's about it. <laughs> that's all we want, baby. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I like that. Uh, Bob, I like that Bob Weir was there, even though. Jerry was still alive, but yeah. I think Jerry was in rehab or something. Yeah. He couldn't make it. So, nice. but uh, yeah, that's uh, that's Woodstock '94. Not so yeah. bad. No, it's solid lineup. No, so I would, I would have gotten to that. Bad. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, you mentioned Bonnaroo, and it does remind me of like the appeal of Bonnaroo to me back in the day yeah. was it was like okay, I can go see Cypress Hill, Merle Haggard, and the White Stripes yes. in the same thing. And yeah, it was just like great for if you were a you know, eclectic, eclectic taste, yeah. and and you know now I'm gonna sound that like was, now I'm gonna sound like an old man, but it's all the dancey dancing. Yeah, now it's just it yeah, is. Yeah. Festival yeah. Every festival is just dance oh, music yes. now. But like, yeah, that was yeah. The, like you could see atmosphere and, and which I did. Merle Haggard. I yeah. saw atmosphere and then walked to Sonic Youth. Yes, like, I did the shit, same run. That's yeah. perfect. Awesome. So, yeah. And it yeah, was and awesome. I split that because I believe it was Sunvolt and then atmosphere and then Sonic Youth. <laughs> oh, I stayed to get close for it. I stayed through the streets no. to get close to atmosphere. That's right. Because ah. it was, uh, I bailed out early though because Be Your Own Pet were open in, on the Sonic Youth stage. Though. And I'm excited because they played all of what, a hundred shows then just disappeared <laughs> up the yep. face of the earth. I know all they those quit a, Oh, do you? <laughs> yeah, I know. I was a crazy fan. But yeah, nine Inch Nails, by the way, did have the most uh, crowd density of the event. Uh, yeah. Shannon Hoon from Blind Melon took the stage in his girlfriend's dress and appeared to be tripping on acid. I love Blind Melon. There, I said it. Yeah, yeah. they're not bad. Aerosmith performed. <laughs> at- <laughs> Aer- oh, well, hey, you, you guys need to talk to Joe Raines. That's his favorite oh, band of all time. Oh, yeah. we've, we've had some conversations where I've, I've given my bona fides and he knew I wasn't making fun of him because <laughs> I knew too much. <laughs> uh, Aerosmith performed around 3 to 4 a.m. right after an extensive fireworks display from Metallica. Uh, yeah, so they anybody would. here seen Metallica live? No, still not. I always like hear it's a good thing, but I've just never felt driven to do. I don't love their music, so it's no. never been a thing. And they're not like Iron Maiden or something seminal where I feel like I gotta go. I feel like I'm just gonna watch some uncles gloat. <laughs> <laughs> that documentary really, some yeah. kind of monster. Yeah, oh, I think so that really funny. sunk them in a big way. Oh. My lifestyle determines my death style. That's one of the lyrics. <laughs> and like they're trying to write songs You're together. You're right, they're great. Yeah, and they're yeah. trying to write songs together. They're like, no, 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 like you, you let's all just add a line. And he's like, 
Kirk Hammett's like, um, these are the hands I drop your trust with. And they're like, that's good. Like, no, it's not. No, it's not. It's, I'm due morons. to watch that again. I find it's every so time good. I watch it, they are worse people than I remember. <laughs> it's just so goofy. It seems like a joke for the majority yes. of it. It, it seems, feels like Spinal yeah. Tap. Yeah, like, it's, it's like a oh, it's, This for is sure. Spinal Tap, yeah, but not sure. yeah, kidding. Yeah, just loving the like, exquisite corpsing a song. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> totally. And they're yeah. like, oh, let's record it anyways. And they never, like, they record like 50 songs. When the songs therapist submits his lyrics. Oh, that's the That's the scene of the movie. When they all hand him in and then he's like, just sort of not making eye contact. Here's mine. Oh. This is my pitches. Too. Yeah, that documentary is. Whether or not you like them or not, that's like one of the most yeah. entertaining things but, oh, ever. For sure. But man, the so fucking uh, I, I just I've never had the pull to see them live, and no. there and I try to see goddamn everybody. Like I yeah, will watch yeah. shit I don't like if I think it'll be interesting, and I just can't imagine it being interesting. Here's no. what's really stupid is uh, what's the guy's name who the new bass player is most recent? Oh, uh, uh, Rob Trujillo. Rob, Rob yeah. Trujillo. So him and uh, I think it's Kirk Hammett. They open now as a duo and they do covers and they do shit like Purple Rain. And it's I bet that sounds hor- awesome. It's actually horrible oh. because the <laughs> arrangement. There's no arrangements. It's just like guitar riffing and then crazy bass shit. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like they did like Pale Blue Eyes by the Velvet Fuck Underground. Yeah. It's like, it's I would like, like to hear that. Does not make sense. You've so far, only listed <laughs> terrible songs. Yeah, I would like, like to hear those two. Play. So you should Google that because that's fucking. <laughs> That's like wow! I can't believe that their fans crazy. are now, listening. Now that, that said, being like, yeah. flip side: how many people in here would be down to go see Echo Brain? <laughs> <laughs> oh right, that's Jason Newsted because they are the future. That's a huge part of the movie. Oh, that's so funny. Echo, <laughs> we saw Echo Brain last night, man. And we Echo Brain's like, the done. future. Metallic is <laughs> like, the past. <laughs> Which should have oh. been a fucking sound drop on somebody's I, record no. somewhere. <laughs> it's like how could they not be joking the majority of the time in that movie? <laughs> that's incredible. Uh, August twenty sixth, Natural Born Killers is released. Ooh. Yeah, uh, the yeah. hell of a lineup Tommy Lee Jones Robert Downey Jr. Woody Harrelson Juliette Lewis Rodney Dangerfield but really that should have been a short film that began the <laughs> moment he throws that donut at the cop and shoots him and Rage Against the Machine's bomb track starts playing the yeah. last 20 minutes of that uh, yes. movie it's fucking incredible the lead up to uh, it I could not give less of a yeah. shit yes he's yeah. you were reminding me that there is a part of that movie I like as you said I'm yeah. like oh that's right there's no, just the a lot of bullshit before so it it's so dope yeah, yeah. and like the whole interrogation scene leading up to the prison riot and yeah. then to the end that's great. Fantastic. Yeah. Everything leading up to it. It's like, don't make me think of Rodney this way, please. No, uh, no. We love Rodney. We love Rodney. He's in Ladybugs. We don't need yeah. to see this. <laughs> yeah. well, I alone. love Ladybugs. I skipped school once to watch Ladybugs at home. Yeah. <laughs> Damn on TV and I was like, fuck it. No one's paying attention. I'll just stay here. Like, I was more of a big green kid. <laughs> <laughs> love them both. Love them both. Ladybugs. Big Jonathan green was Brandis. just five Jonathan of being a co-ed team. <laughs> Props. Yeah. Sequest DSVs. Maybe. Jonathan Brandis. He did yeah. pass away, right? In a terrible way. Oh, yeah. He killed himself. Sorry, buddy. Did something happen? To him, yeah. we'll never know, but I have my thoughts. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's one of those <laughs> child stars before social media. Uh-huh. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. They're safe now, though. <laughs> Did Brad Renfro work with Brian Singer and then mm, overdose? Jesus <gasps> Christ. Anyway, sorry I do like those. Look into the cold, dead eyes in of that Brian Singer. Though, he did go find out. solace working with Larry Clark. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I want it pointed out that that's a point in Larry Clark's favor yes. <laughs> as far point. as fucked up directors that I will still kind of enjoy I want that <laughs> yes. to be known because <laughs> yes. that's a good movie <laughs> absolutely absolutely <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about the movie Bully for the people who are like, the fuck are you talking about? What happened in the very 90s? Very aggressive. It's yeah. very, very violent. And uh, uh, <laughs> got a big chunk here on August 30th, 1994. 25-year-old R. Kelly illegally marries 15-year-old oh, Aaliyah in Rosemont, scam. Illinois. That part. Uh, the marriage was later annulled. R. Kelly was the lead songwriter and producer of her debut album. The title of that album is... Age ain't nothing but a number. Oh, yeah. Fuck, I never That's put the that worst together. Part. That's the worst it's part. It's real bad. And That's a real Mr. Uh, Snowman. Yeah, there it's were... Like the brand is me <laughs> fucking you. <laughs> like, there, yeah. there, were no abs- there were absolutely no signs of what was to come for R. Kelly. No one could have predicted. Uh, he didn't produce Are You That Someone, though, right? <laughs> no, that's good. No, I can continue to later. enjoy that smooth-ass track. Oh, that's the Dr. Yeah, yeah. Doolittle soundtrack. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that, One of the many times where there's a cool, super cool song that has footage of a movie from the 90s. Yeah. Go on. Uh... I realize this is, was a big one in England, but we're we're not talking about this fucking band until '96. Oasis releases definitely, maybe. I love, I like Oasis, but hey, their year was '96. More imp- fucking importantly, this is the day that we get Boys to Men mm. Two, which oh, yeah. uh, again. Yeah. 
Uh, who wants to you, slow dance? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Who wants to awkwardly dance at a middle school? Second most seminal <laughs> slow dance song only to All My Life from Casey and JoJo. <laughs> oh, yeah. Casey and JoJo. Very, totally. Very Man. Good. Yeah. This is, uh, you get this song, you get down on bended knee. Mm. Like, oh, oh shit. Man. Boy, you didn't know people could sing this good. Like, you didn't. It's it's funny because I These do. Motown Philly boys have such a soft song. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so good, I, I really do think that, like, you know, with it's the same as athletics. You're like, this is the fastest yes. guy who has ever fucking run, and then some other dude does it faster. And, you know, yeah. human evolution just keeps going. And in terms of just singing, this was the you, you would yeah. never hurt anybody yeah. with this tight of Angels. harmony. Yeah. It was yeah. they they stood on Luther Vandross's shoulder, <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. just like watch this drive. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah, and I'm you know I'm sure there's probably some uh, you know group out there that sings better, but man, I mean, uh-huh. like pristine. Yeah. And talking about fucking without being threatening at all. No, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. no, this, this was sounds very nice. Fucking your <laughs> grandma with like. Yeah, bingo, this is what church <laughs> ladies like, listen to. <laughs> this is the way you fuck your grandma. <laughs> They're not like, I mean, wait, what? what? The, uh, You're sweet about it. <laughs> like, oh, okay. <laughs> I found out, I thought that was out of uh, boys to men <laughs> travel with a refrigerated <laughs> truck as part of their run because uh-huh. they keep roses for everybody That's in the true. audience. Because oh, they oh, hand yeah. out roses to every lady who wants one at their concert. There's a really great Netflix doc about them. It's on this oh, really? it's part of a series called This Is Pop, which is fucking great. Oh, I watched Ooh, that. The whole series is great, I but the first that. one is Boys and Men, and it's oh, so Oh, I had no idea this existed. Oh, this it's exciting. so good. It'll make you fall in love with those guys because yeah. they're really passionate, good yeah, people. Yeah. And, they, and they, lo- they love singing. Just a fun real- band yeah. to root for. You're just Dude, like, yeah. you guys are great. That. You're good at your job. You Absolutely. make good songs. Yeah. Great. You, yeah. yeah. It's a very, really cool documentary. You guys will love it. It's we awesome. used to have a crazy guy in Annapolis, Maryland, who had a, a, a walkie-talkie, or not walkie-talkie, a little uh, Walkman with, a, with, this, with this album in it. Yeah. He'd walk uh-huh. around with headphones. and go around and be like, you want to hear boys to men? He'd say, <laughs> no. He'd go, I used to be their manager. I got them this. <laughs> Hell yeah. Like, no. And his name was Spider. And uh, we'd always. Uh, one time I asked him, Spider, why is your name Spider? He goes, how many legs does a spider have? I said, eight. He goes, that's how many ways I come at you if I need to. Whoa. Wow. This guy yeah. rules. <laughs> and then he put on his headphones and Lou walked away. Uh, was it weird <laughs> knowing the, the governor song. of Maryland? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's fantastic. <laughs> so. Shout out to Spider. Thank you for this. Uh, yeah, spider, Spider, welcome to the Can you imagine podcast. getting a tweet from at Maryland Spider? <laughs> <laughs> so, I love it. I'd be like, I remember you. Oh, you. shit. I've been following the career for years. <laughs> I never upgraded from the Walkman. <laughs> no, like, no, no, no. I, I fucking walk-man. love Opinion K. <laughs> <laughs> I was your manager, too. You just didn't know. <laughs> that French Stewart shit is genius. I'm glad I thought of it when I was your manager. <laughs> uh, this, this song was number one, and this song got replaced at number one by Down on Bended Knee. Uh, wow. The champions, and that Straight is champions. that is the uh, f- uh, so they are the third artists to replace themselves at number one after Elvis and the Beatles, wow. and they were the first people to do it in thirty years. So, Damn. yeah, the I feel like we don't really give proper due to just how fucking dominant nineties R and B was. Dude, yeah, yeah. No. It, it is so thoroughly underplayed now when people like reference back to like pop culture. But if you look, and it is just a fucking juggernaut force. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a renaissance. I wonder why that is. I wonder why we are just discounting the work of uh, people in the 90s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wonder, true. I wonder why such a thing happened. Oh, I like crazy. to leave it nebulous so people will try to figure it out <laughs> like a puzzle. Do your own yeah. research. <laughs> like uh, to lay the breadcrumbs out and disappear <laughs> into the shadows. It's, yeah, it's, it's a fact. But it, I think it's because like rock and hip hop seem cool yeah. and they don't want to go like actually the two largest genres in the entire world moment where R&B and country. And country. Yeah, yeah. yeah, the forgotten. Yeah, it, was the, the, it was parents jams for days that <laughs> yeah. no one wants to talk yeah. about. It, it. it turns out the adult contemporary, the people with all the money, they actually do yeah. throw down on some albums. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, Lord. Well, we have to get Brandy out of here. I, oh, yeah. yeah. Um, say, I gotta go, guys. Oh. Sorry, sorry I'm missing the end, oh, the end okay. of 94. Well, what uh, happens at the end of the year? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You'll never know. <laughs> I'm just gonna John Wayne Gacy on out of here. Uh, <laughs> hell yeah. Well, uh, Brandy, uh, thank you so much for doing this. Thanks uh, for having me, yeah. as always. Got anything you want to tell the people on the way out? Uh, yeah, 
yeah, all the same shit. BrandyPosey.com has all my dates and deets for everything. Brandazzle for all the social media. Uh, Lady to Lady is the podcast. Opinion Cave is the album. And um, yeah, I'll talk to you guys next time. Hell this yeah. has been a treat. Yeah. Oh, yes. Thank you so Thanks much for having yeah. us. Take care. Hell yeah. We'll be here for we'll 17 hold down more the hours. Yeah, <laughs> no, no, we're, now I just got to wear down Seth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, this is, this is the era where things genuinely didn't happen in December. That's so, right. Yeah. We're going to go week by week from this point on. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Randy. Yeah. September 8th, 1994, the MTV Video Music Awards BMA. takes oh, place. Uh, and the ceremony starts with one of the weirder moments where uh, Michael Jackson and his new wife, Lisa Marie oh, Presley. Oh, that's this year. They opened the show by oh, going man. on stage. And Very weird. Michael Jackson had married her in May of that year. And, she and they all said... <laughs> This wouldn't last. And then they proceed <laughs> to kiss each other in the we. It's not even that it's gross. It's just strange. It's not how people be kissing. Yeah, it's just a strange, <laughs> strange thing to look at. Um, but uh, and the then, way you kiss your grandma. Say it, it. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, <laughs> not, no, I don't make know. Make sure the people see you doing it. That's <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love her. Sorry. <laughs> Check it out. I love her. I want to touch her. Look. <laughs> Watch me. I'm doing her. Right uh, now. Back to hers. I would be to any adult woman. <laughs> Why do you keep saying it like that? <laughs> <That's right. laughs> uh, September 11th, 1994, Ooh. the 46th Primetime Emmy Awards, hosted by. Patricia Richardson and Ellen DeGeneres. Truly Who the 9-11 is? of 2094. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the mom from Home Improvement. Oh, oh right, right. And, oh, yeah. And Ellen. Big fan. And uh, the winners, uh, Kelsey Grammer wins for Frasier, Candace Bergen for Murphy Brown. Oh, really? Oh. They won Emmys? Yeah. NYPD Blue uh, picked up a bunch of Emmys, Some picket words. fences. Yep, and, of course, Kramer, Michael Richardson picking up uh, Best Supporting <laughs> well, you know. in what a comedy. To him? I don't know. Ooh, uh, about being on stage with the microphone. Yeah, I'm yeah. not sure he said that. <laughs> September 13th, Clinton crime bill gets signed, written by Joseph Robinette Biden. You know, have the assault weapons ban in there, which is cool. Uh, and it's also uh, started the three strikes law, expanded mandatory minimum sentencing and created nine point seven billion dollars in federal incentives for states to build private prisons. In the years since the bill was passed, the federal prison population has doubled. It also eliminated Pell Grant eligibility for people in prison, thus making it harder to get an education and reintegrate into society. It also expanded the school to prison pipeline and increased racial disparities in the juvenile justice system by creating draconian penalties for so-called super predators. That's where we get that from. Thanks, Hillary. Uh, these tended to be low-income children of color, especially black children who are convicted of multiple crimes. So that sucks. That sucks. Uh, oh, we got that Martin Lawrence movie three strikes <laughs> yeah yeah exactly and uh you know thankfully the guy who wrote it uh you know i don't know what happened to that guy he disappeared so that's cool we don't have to worry about him anymore uh but uh anyway i you know i have to Let's get change history like quentin that's... tarantino movies i know for real, for real. he went on to become an astronaut and uh he married uh clive barker but i will <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, that was... <laughs> i was like that's real good <laughs> thank you that was a uh... solid insane pull <laughs> 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 so all of that sucks, but September 13th, 1994 is a huge day for the fat community. No pun intended. Oh, cheeseburgers. Uh, because right. first of all, we have the release of four by blues traveler. Oh, baby yeah. comes out that year. Famous One, fat. And yes, fam <laughs> One famous fat, famous, large guy. Blue. But look, we're going to play any of that. I, if we, we can touch on it. I love blues traveler, but we got to get to the issue okay, at hand, okay, which okay. is of yeah, course, right. oh. It was all a dream. I used to read Word Up magazine. Something peppered yeah, and heavy. But, uh, yeah, this Holy is... Holy shit. Here's uh, the thing is, I never listened to the record ever until I drove over here today, actually. I've only heard the oh, single, no shit. really. And then I've heard the record after he passed. Yeah. Because that was when Puff Daddy was checking. Yeah, Life After Death. Right, yeah. Life After Death. So then, so I listened to this on the way here. The first two songs, like, melted my brain. I was like, yeah. I love it when you miss iconic shit, and you know, and you sort of keep it in your pocket. And then you're like, is this great? And you're like, yes, uh, yes it is. Yeah. 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 Production... <laughs> I team that that bad boy had put together at Amazing. this time period and just the, the it's you know it's that almost motown run where it's just like hey there's cash money on the thing you yeah. gotta hit hits, for us because we will fucking hits. make it happen yeah and there's so much like uh and there's puff daddy shittily raps overall i it. know just sort of not uh -huh. so much on this one though. yeah uh -huh. not so much on this album. i've been uh been back on listening to some mace stuff and oh it's i a, love it's real frustrating how much he's on all the mace, yeah. Yeah. Mace record. although there's a song called 
Fuck, it's got Monifa is like the is the person who features on it, but it's a song about taking a girl's virginity. And it is like, I can't fucking believe that's around. <laughs> oh my god. That. That's why he had to then go become a priest. Oh, it's called like I Gotta Have It. Or <laughs> something terrible like that. Oh, it's god. so fucked up. <laughs> I listened to it the other day with the car with Holly, and she was like, hey, dude, this, this is not even funny to me. <laughs> and I'm like, well, it is though. You should hear the whole payoff because it's like a little story. And she's like, no, no, no. I'm like, no, but there's a narrative. All right. Uh, <laughs> I let it go. But there is no guy <laughs> trying to explain a song to a partner by saying you gotta listen all the way through it it has a good end is ever one there's a whole arc he's gonna figure it out no the story <laughs> yeah. don't worry uh, but yeah this uh, if it wasn't already good enough for uh, Thick Boys this Ooh. is also the day that we get yeah. Cruisin' USA, a video game oh. that you can sit on your ass at the arcade and play. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Digitized ladies in bikinis. Yeah, yeah. yeah. hell yeah. Huge Glorious deal. game. Huge deal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So, uh, I would yeah. say, yeah, this definitely for <laughs> fat dudes got yeah. laid on the back of Notorious B.I.G. Absolutely. He was One a of the fucking heroes. good, big teddy bear. Every time you see like sexy big guy go, you're always just like, fuck yeah, man. Yeah. You, you are, you oh, are yeah. doing the Lord's work. Totally. That's why we when you see like a DJ Khaled fucking it up, you're like, do you understand <laughs> yeah. how fucking hard every cool looking fat guy had to work for you That's to right. show up and fuck all this up for everyone? And just shout catchphrases. And <laughs> yeah. uh, you're not smooth. <laughs> you don't look cool in your white <laughs> outfit. Exactly. You have no narrative. You arrived what? into the world. You wear a hat poorly. <laughs> yes. <Yeah, that's right. laughs> you ever seen a hat on Biggie? <laughs> it's like we invented hats just for him. That's right. And he had numerous kinds of hats. Yeah. Too. He could switch them up. <laughs> uh, for different kinds of big guys. Not everybody fits the same there kind of go. hat. There you go. He is helping everyone. He's an artist and a goddamn servant. That's right. What did Tupac ever do? Yeah. <laughs> Joking. Uh, I wanted to make mention of the uh, the main menu song of Cruising USA because it's oh, yeah. hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> now it sounds. Listen to the USA. You can hear the guy in the background just going, oh, yeah. <laughs> Cars. Yeah. Speed. I mean, tread. I was. This is awesome. <laughs> I was terrible at this game, and I played it all I the time. I played this yes. game. Yeah. Uh, but uh, the big thing that I, and again, I was bad at this game. So the reason I didn't really know this is how the game ended until I started looking into it. Did you know that this game, the last level is Washington, D.C.? And first of all, like, they clearly ran out of graphics at some point because you drive oh, yeah. <laughs> you drive through a tunnel that's made out of money in Washington D.C. Oh uh, shit! They talk about the Illuminati yeah, tunnel. Yeah, say, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wait, that's real, dude. <laughs> that is real. The money tunnel. <laughs> We've never seen the photos uh, of that on that same place that has the Denver airport photo. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but they say it on the title screen. It says, "Cruise the USA, San Francisco to Washington D.C. and jam with the president in the White House hot tub." And that is what you win <laughs> yes. if you win the. Christ. fucking game you can actually go to the end here and we'll put this on our twitter so people can see it this is the end of cruising usa Bug, not ass. now you can actually hear clinton <laughs> listen to the ladies and gentlemen the cruising May I point out that the presidential wow. White House hot tub is a truck with a hot tub in it? <laughs> yeah, 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 right. yeah. It's a truck with a hot tub in it. Let's let's uh, let's go back and look at this uh, 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 Zapruder film, if you will. So Clinton Whoa. is clearly in the hot tub. He is wearing, I think, goggles or 3D glasses of yes. some kind in the hot tub with him. Obviously, Hillary is on the right, and I believe that to be Paula Jones. Yes, I do believe that's Paula that Jones. Insane. Yeah, they're making jokes about that. Yeah, like, and teenagers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and there's they uh, know no one gives a shit. <laughs> yeah. That is whoever designed this page. Going, <laughs> totally. oh, I dare you to pay attention to what I'm <laughs> yeah. doing. Yeah, In this 10 yeah. second window, we could like, cows on the roof. And but all sorts yeah, of there's shit. cows on the roof. There's like, uh, oh, yeah, like Jack barn. Ruby being handed a suitcase full of money. <laughs> yeah, there is a CIA guy in the bushes. I'm there was not another one that we closed in too. And there's one of the root uh, standing and there's also the a shadows. cow and a barn we're not yeah. mentioning that there's a cow on and the a windmill the yeah yeah two cows and a windmill and a barn i like cruising usa's version of america <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah it's just highways and uh presidents and that's like kind of the last <laughs> run i suppose of like where you can have like the president as an abstract concept of a character in <laughs> yeah. video games uh, yeah, it's true it's also weird that they're like ah no big deal is shit on the president like that's like actually you know what i was thinking about recently it is kind of crazy that like you know, bad dudes and cruising USA have all these things where like, and you'll meet Mr. President. And yeah, you're right. just like, I'm a kid, and even I'm like, this is kind of dumb. <laughs> and then Resident Evil 4, 
uh-huh. a decade later, <laughs> has the audacity to have the plot, the president's daughter has been kidnapped. Yeah. <laughs> the president's daughter has been kidnapped. What a, what a old like, chestnut. <laughs> it's like, look, we had to reinvent this game series and come up with a nice modern twist on it, but That's also it. we'll have the plot to Streets of Rage That's too. That's amazing. <laughs> Uh, large guys had their day. Cut to September 22nd, 1994. It's time to go back to the pretty people because... Hey! Oh, come on. <laughs> Gotta love it. This is the premiere of Friends on motherfucking NBC. Uh, I remember trying to find the CD single and their album came out like after the show. So yeah. there was like a month where... The like, Rembrandts? We had to tape... Actually, we taped it off fucking TV and listened to it all the time in the car. Wow. <laughs> That's how, like, I also taped MTV Unplugged Nirvana off... It's airing before it comes to the commercials. We do somewhere, I'm sure, because my brothers kept a lot of that shit. Uh, I'm sorry, that's where I went. <laughs> no, it's was to take your beloved thing yes. from a great moment in music history and just want to shell it for commercials <laughs> well, from the time. That's what friends are for. That's what the song's all uh, about. Kyle. If you saw my YouTube, you'd see I live a real dark life. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you seem to have a weird relationship with capitalism. The answer is, yeah. yeah. Yes, in fact, I do. Uh, <laughs> the, the Rachel hairdo, designed oh, by huge. Aniston's hairstylist Chris McMillan. I'm wearing it right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it looks so <laughs> And I look great. It looks like my nipples are also hard. Yeah. From fucking Dragon Ball. <laughs> That's right. I'm wearing a white t shirt. My nipples are also hard. It's nice to know. Uh, Becky Hughes of Parade Magazine reported that the Rachel was the most requested hairstyle of the 90s. One hairstylist. What about the Caesar? <laughs> well, for, for ladies, I think the Caesar might have <laughs> taken it for dudes, especially after Marshall Mathers. Uh, but uh, one hairstylist interviewed in Parade said, quote, The Rachel comprises nearly 40% of all of my requests for female hairstyles. Uh, rec- recently, the modern Rachel has become a thing on TikTok, which I was upset to find out. So apparently, people are. Back dyeing a little bit of their hair and framing the sh- absolute shit out of their face. I've yeah. uh, I've taken the stance now of no longer hating anything on TikTok. No, no. <laughs> that is how I'm going to secure my future and my future yeah. career and future fans. Is that I'm just like whatever it is. I think it's great, guys. Uh, it's all going to work out for you. Did y'all dig Friends? <laughs> no. Same. I watched uh, one I, season, and even by the end of that, I was like, I don't know why yeah. I watched this. I was watching it at the time, and it came on after Seinfeld. Seinfeld and right. I, you know, it's one of those great shows that you watch later, and you're like, oh, this is extremely dark but as a child you're like kramer's funny and that was all i thought about seinfeld but i liked it at least and then i remember like this is not like some revisionism of me trying to sound cool Mm -hmm. now because friends is now cool all of a sudden because television is written so shittily that shittily written television from the 90s seems good by comparison but like even at the time i was like i don't fucking like you know this is not my shit at all mm. it's um, uh I, we, well, we were a fox and abc household much more than an nbc household so yeah. i didn't i must see tv was not really my thing i didn't watch uh seinfeld didn't watch a ton of friends was not a mad about you person oh yeah, yeah. sure but but you want to talk dharma and greg spin city Ooh, dharma and greg. <laughs> uh, the, i mean and then of course the entirety of the friday night lineup <laughs> september 23rd we already talked about Forrest Gump. Now we've got the other big TNT movie of the week. Shawshank Redemption is Huge, released. Beautiful. A movie that was a Great financial movie. disappointment when it came yeah, out. Yeah, I saw it on VHS. A flop. It yep. got uh, traction when it started getting nominated for a bunch of Oscars and went back into the theaters yep. after the Oscar announcements. Yep. But yeah, that's one of those movies that I only probably in the last like 10 years ever watched sitting down from beginning to end. It's a movie that I have seen dozens of times, yeah. but only in pieces. Yes. Like where I was like, I've seen the whole thing, but it was always in weird orders. Cause it was on seen it twice TNT. from front to back. Yeah. Uh, outstanding. outstanding. So it's good. a outstanding solid film. movie. It's a, uh, uh one of those ones where, like, I feel like I watched it a ton, and now it's sort of in the ones where I'm just sort of like, I'm not mad at you, but we don't hang out as much as we used sure. to. Sure, <laughs> totally. I had to take like 20 years for those kinds of movies. And I then also go back and see. think some of it is I had some of those that weren't my movies that I've taken, like, mm-hmm. like that have gotten into like the Rocky movies were not a part of my thing, and now those are like fun to throw yeah. on. For sure. So oh, things yeah. just shift in and out. Totally, totally, yeah. <laughs> well, there's cultural movies like that where they're just stuffed in your throat so much. It's like Led Zeppelin. It's like it's hard. I will listen to physical graffiti, but it's hard to listen to like Led Zeppelin 2. Oh, it's interesting. Like, Mine's like two is the one I'll do. Really? I mean, I can't get into a Zeppelin conversation. Yeah, yeah. It's like we have the, the 1990s calls. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, uh, Led Zeppelin. That's yeah, okay. I believe Jimmy Page and Robert Plant reformed in the 90s. Uh, <laughs> uh, no quarter. Oh, would you and, say that it might have been shitty? <laughs> it was shitty. And then Walking to Clarksdale is produced by Steve Albini. Hey. hey. 
So he's got a bunch of hilarious stories. And eventually, Robert Plant would go on to make Raising Sand with Alison Krauss, and dads would have a new CD in the dad band. God damn, I have to send you both. There's a music video they made where they look, he looks like such an asshole in this video. (laughs) Then I'd like to see it, Oh, it's him running around like glitter. It's fucking insane. (laughs) Like, it's just like, we'll put him in hilarious, like, uh, backdrops, and he'll just do his plant thing, which is what? Like, mimicking a woman? (laughs) And and he's out there. stuff, it's so bad. He, like, lives in Joshua Tree. (laughs) Uh Uh-huh. And, like, Nat by Mel and I were out there sometime. I don't know why, but both of us were trying to like will while we're waiting for a stand up gig. Uh-huh. We might see Robert playing <laughs> yeah. in the desert. Dude, uh, he lives in he lives in Nashville off and on. And my dad is friends with John Paul Jones because of just Nashville and bass players. He's also in them uh, crooked vultures. Uh, yeah, that's dad. right. My dad is uh, Josh Hami. Uh, <laughs> Hume, whatever the guy's name is. Uh, I don't say <laughs> that bullshit. I'm sorry. Hume. That's another that's another story. But uh, but anyways, he came into the restaurant I worked at, uh, which is like a, a deli. So we had this little like counter. And he goes and sits down. You know, he doesn't want to be bothered. It's a music city. So most people leave you alone. They know you're famous or something. Yeah. Music. And so, but this girl that worked there, who's a moron, had no idea who he was. And he talked to her for like two hours about soccer and rugby and his kids and all this shit because he knew she didn't know the fuck that's, he was. I mean, that's got to be such a gift. <laughs> oh, and it was amazing. Like, I was when you're that just going kind, on. Where it's just like, yeah, please, the love of God. <laughs> yeah. Like, he was like, let me tell you more about rugby. And she's like, is it like soccer? He's like, no, no, no. Well, the rules. And he's like, explain. Like, just having a ball being like, this I mean, moron is no idea. That's always the game. If you want to have a conversation with somebody you admire, do yeah. not bring up their shit at all. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah. Some of the best conversations I've had with people is because I knew vaguely they were into a thing. Yes. Like the number of times I've been like, I've met a favorite musician I like because we read a book together. Totally, totally. <laughs> but yeah, but he seems like a nice guy who probably was a total shithead in 1974 <laughs> or so. Yeah. September 27th, Ween releases oh, Chocolate wow. and Cheese. Really? What a year for music. Yeah, man. and God so damn. for more on this, check out my episode of the Spin Doctors podcast where I talked for two and a half hours about uh, my favorite record Hell of the yeah. 90s. Also, is Chocolate and Cheese your favorite record of the 90s? I think it is. Wow. I honestly think it is. I mean, yeah. a solid pick, but also like that's a... I will say it's the most meaningful to me personally. Yeah. You know, I think there's, you know, the 90s is chock full of... God, uh, that's but, like, you have sent me uh, down to having to do a real spiral now and try to break that list down. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, I could come That's up with a classy the list. pick. Mm-hmm. It's so fucking good, dude. And I talked about it uh, ad, ad nauseum. Uh, <laughs> I'm a real sellout because I'm a real mollusk man. Oh, the mollusk is good, but that's just that's the first one I uh, I got into. So, you know. Well, this is the one that kids would like talk about at school. Yeah. Spinal yeah. meningitis. Yeah, spinal that's meningitis. Us. Roses are free. Yep. Yep. Take me away. Yeah. Yeah. Roses could... are free is real, real good. Yeah. It's a good ass song. Hell yeah. Uh, that same day, uh, we talked about this uh, at length uh, when we did our uh, Ram Jam episode. Uh, R.E.M. releases Monster. Yeah, good. my favorite R.E.M. album. Yeah, pretty damn good. Yep. Like, especially like later era. It's Crushed Eyeliner, great. man. That's yeah, song. great. Rips. But, yeah, uh, that album, that's a great album. But, you know, that same day, let's also uh, let us not get away from this date without bringing up... Oh, you know that drum sound. <laughs> <laughs> you know that oh. Oh. The snare sound. It's time oh. to watch oh. Boston Common, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, oh, oh, you all take it there. I have now <laughs> promised to a family member that if Dave and I will go to a Dave Matthews concert, I'll go. I'll go. I go. I, I am. Uh, I'm pretty intent on it. It could be I, positive vibes. I, I mean, I'm at the point where I will basically see most things yeah. if it's not a huge financial. Burden. Same, same. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Me too. Me too. Yeah, but uh, yeah, under the table and dreaming comes out. I thought on this, this shit was so deep, man. I, used to to, I had the cassette tape of this and listened to it all the hell. I, I think I this is it. one of the handful of being so from California nice. things I was just able to fully miss. <laughs> yeah. You were so deep on the yeah, Red Hot enough. Chili yeah, Peppers. Oh, this this could fuck right yeah. up. This yeah. is the sound of a college on the East Coast in 1994. God, dog, we are under that bridge. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's is, also like when you're a nerdy kid, but you want to like like popular rock music and stuff. Like this is pretty it's comfortable. Safe. It's pretty safe. You know, like your mom and dad yeah. likes it, but your kids kids like it too. But. I was fully unaware of yeah. how popular they yeah. are until college. Yeah. I had never yeah. met a goddamn Dave Matthews <laughs> Band <laughs> fan until I was 19 years yeah. old. Oh, and man. then I remember in college, sitting in a dude I was, was friends with at the time's like room, and he put on a Dave Matthews DVD oh. so that he could pace and show me the things that made the Dave Matthews Band great live. <laughs> oh, <laughs> And it's like, if you look the drummer, he's chewing gum. That's how good he is. Sometimes you'll catch him pop in a bubble while he's playing. <laughs> His drumming is I'm mean, very lame. I, I mean, I get that he can do I, a lot of stuff. But I mean, bless that oh. dude. He was a sweet guy, but he kept trying. His two favorite bands were the Dave Matthews Band and Tool. And I was like, man, 
Come on. I really overestimated when you said you like the Mars Volta. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's right. I thought that that was going to lead yeah. to us both going like, yeah, let's take drugs and listen to King Crimson. Totally. Not the way it went. Totally. Yeah, that's like what you wanted. You want to talk about Robert Flip and Agent Blue? <laughs> no? Ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I didn't drive here. Yeah. That's awesome. I fucking love King Crimson. And yeah, that's the conversation you want to have it too. Yeah. Man. It's like, this is why the 80s Starless era of the band. fucking Bible yeah, black totally. man. They hate each other when they made this. They're like, Dave Matthews band. Live at Red Rocks, dude, was fucked up because... <laughs> Like fucking whatever the bass player was, uh, he was getting his goatee trimmed. And yeah, <laughs> and they nicked it a little bit, <laughs> yes. and they had too much dairy on the backstage platter, so we were all feeling a little low yeah. before we went on stage. And pulled it out. <laughs> they ripped his pajama pants, and it was insane. <laughs> <laughs> cool. I I do have a distinct memory of sitting in my bedroom with MTV going, and this song coming on, and like. Seriously, just thinking this is different. Yeah, really, it, nothing sounds like that it. is no. true. I, if yeah. I'm a record, you know, back to my A and R thing. <laughs> yeah. If so. I'm an A and R guy, I absolutely sign this. That's yeah. like that's it. I don't I love, love this. <laughs> I don't know that I even fully like this. But if I am looking for something that is interesting that I think There's can something fucking here. sell, and I see this guy <laughs> with that smile, with yeah. his own Clarence Clemens playing fucking violin, mm -hmm. yeah. and a gum chewing fucking guy <laughs> back there, like this, yeah. is, I sign this in a heartbeat. You're right. I say you're yes. about to make me a billion fucking dollars <laughs> and <a> beautiful idiot. <laughs> and we're tripping barrel airs. Also, yeah. also, Never also, stop singing like that. It's <laughs> made of money. <laughs> I did it. The, the other executives look at you like you're insane and then you buy their home. <laughs> That's right. And their children. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, September 30th, Ed Wood is released. Hey, yeah. I own that movie on Blu-ray. Oh, so fucking good. Tim. No one saw it. So, yeah, yeah, did no, it was it a bomb? It, it was yeah. a massive bomb. Because it's so niche. Well, it, it's such a specific it's, it's also one of the great moments where we're always like, I wish Tim Burton would make something like personal and interesting and not just yeah. like jam out crap. And then every time he does it, no one Never shows works up. Yeah, yeah, totally. He's like, well, now I'm going to make Alice 29 to yep. punish you all. They're like, do the tricks. Do the tricks. And he's like, like, I did. You failed me. <laughs> yeah. Like, we is. did. We super did. It's it's a yeah. masterpiece. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's, it's, there's so many quotes. There's so many great shots. Yeah. There's so many fun moments. Incredible. The fucking soundtrack, the Howard Shore soundtrack's amazing. Incredible. Yeah, I once saw it at Vanderbilt University, and they Ooh. did like a theremin concert of the soundtrack That's cool. before. Ooh. So it was incredible. And then we watched the movie. It was fucking... That movie's really... I, I was thinking a little more than a character who's so fucking nuts that he just can't see the reality, but is full of passion the, and joy. That the, was like so fun to watch. The run he has when he's trying to get the first movie, yeah. and he's talking about being in World War II Incredible. in panties and a garter belt under his uniform, and he's not just afraid of getting taken prisoner. He's <laughs> yeah. like, because if I'm taken prisoner, I'm murdered immediately. <laughs> that's and it's just like... I remember the first time I heard him, like, that's fun. And the, every time I'm like, that whole run of dialogue and the level Incredible. of like effervescent positivity he has as he's Incredible. saying it is Incredible. truly like, like yes. I've never been a crazy Johnny Depp fan yeah. but like that movie totally. ev everybody I in agree. it is a thousand yeah. percent hundred percent and and also when you're an independent artist that's like you need everyone knows yes. you need it's that a, guy it's you a real don't shit. kill yourself movie yeah too. yeah it is and, and also those same guys wrote Dolomite is my name which is fucking they also great. wrote the people versus OJ Simpson oh yeah. really they're, just, oh, really they're, they're the fucking oh, best oh that shit was that's fantastic. their brand that's, that's, his, wow, that's, that's now I will say just to not pass over Dolomite uh, I think has ultimately become my movie of the year that year. So great. it is. I, I it's what four years old now. I believe yeah. I've seen it close yeah. to twenty something yeah. times. Yeah, and also never seen such willingly selling out when a director makes uh, the movie with, with the same lead two movies in one year. One of them's brilliant, and one of them is just like we get it coming to America too. We want to see this person. Oh, person. they did that. Same too. director, same actor. And it's Whoa. that bad. So yeah. you know they're like we wow. understand. There's a different quality level going on it's, here. Well, Dolomite is also one of those movies where like. Every set person in that movie is so fucking excited this movie is oh, getting 100%. made. Everybody's having so much it's, fun. It's like like everybody was like, we all like this is a thing that needed to be done. Yeah. It's also like one of the handful beautiful. movies where like I have not watched that movie and not cried at the end. Yeah. Oh my I if you want to figure out exactly what I give a fuck about, yeah. <laughs> watching a guy talking to a person who he's influenced and fucking issuing fame to appreciate tears every yeah. time yeah, it is too. disgusting what an ugly crier i am at the yeah end of that movie. it's fucking great it's I, mean, I wouldn't say it's as good as ed wood but I, I like it better than ed wood fuck really? it i'll say it <laughs> ed go. wood's good but i'll take out dolomite over a hundred percent of the time the they're either. both classics but like <laughs> i gotta pick fucking dolomite or fucking yeah. ed wood characters uh yeah how much dolomite sexy lady funny. kung fu is in plan nine <laughs> yeah, please remind right. me i might that's be forgetting right. something i don't think there's much <laughs> <laughs> october 3rd 1994 uh so power rangers has already hit uh so now we've got the funniest uh, ripoff I've ever heard. <laughs> 
tattooed teenage alien fighters from, from Beverly, Beverly Hills, Hills. Oh. premieres on USA. Oh, oh. You know I watched it. <laughs> you know I watched it because I watched all those shows. Horus, Centaur, Apollo. The fate of the Earth depends on these <laughs> What kind of tattoos? <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> it's it it, oh, so it is the lowest rent of the shows. Man. Uh years ago, I I God help me, I will figure out how to turn it into a streaming show at some point as soon as copyright <laughs> laws are different. Uh, I used to run a live show <laughs> off and on. It's the only project I've ever refused to let die, uh, called Retro Rad. <laughs> and it is just me riffing on commercials at old shitty media. Uh, and I did a Power Rangers ripoffs run <laughs> where I just went through a bunch of them. And that that is, I would say, somewhere in kind of the lower middle. Because like you have your gold, like your big bad Beetleborgs that are that are so fucking weird mm-hmm. and complicated that they transcend. Mm-hmm. You have your VR troopers that are just such a hot mess sure. that like, but there's a talking dog. <laughs> uh, and then you have like your masked rider, which sucks, but it brings us Furbus, the shittiest fictional character of all time, and Superhuman Samurai Squad that just reminded us all that Matthew Lawrence is real cute. Uh, but then you get like this and the Mystic Knights at Tiranog, and you're just you're real trash. And oh. this one <laughs> looks the worst because it was fully. It's the one that was made for $9. Yeah. There's no footage pulled from other stuff. <laughs> nope. It's, uh, it, but it was also, this was paired. It was the ripoff block because I was so non-discerning in the 90s. <laughs> if television was on, I was going to be interested in what's going yeah, on. Yeah, for sure. No, as long as the movie was 90-ish minutes long, it was a perfectly fine piece of cinema. <laughs> but within this, it was paired with a show called USA High that was a ripoff of Saved by the Bell. Oh, so you got shit. a Power Rangers and a Saved by the Bell ripoff Good as stuff. if they're just marketing USA Network <laughs> to me. Yeah. Uh, and USA High was pretty sweet. There was a guy named Lazzarini who was the one of the druggy friends in the Basketball Diaries. <laughs> and they were a bunch of, it was an international school of uh, high school kids. <laughs> Whoa. How long did the, these A reboots? year each. Yeah, uh, there, is, there is, there can't be more than 13 yeah. episodes of either. Yeah. Uh, that same day, by the way. Yeah. Fucking cranberries. Dude, so Holly, uh, my girlfriend, so she used to... Uh, her first live performance stuff was doing like coffee shop open mics, uh-huh. and oh, she yeah. played behind blue eyes uh, in this and song. Zombie? Yeah, Hell and it's yeah. like this coin that sits on. I can't remember the third one was, but it's like the that set rules. list for you're like that's the shit. Yeah, that is like. But yeah, this is the day. Uh, no no need to argue. The record that this is on got released. Gentlemen, Love it. what a fucking time. Yeah. <laughs> right? All right. Now, now there's about to be two. Seth's got to get I out gotta of here. I got to go, but I love everyone here. I love the cranberries. Is this a reality show? I know. I know. I want a cash prize. It's going <laughs> to just end up being me yep. just in here. It, 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 it's it's See, whereas I imagine in a few minutes, I'm adjusting the board. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Down. You had a show to do. <laughs> just rivers by himself. <laughs> so uh, I should also say, because yeah, I forgot to mention earlier. Yeah. Seth. I made a movie about this band called Silkworm, a band that put out two records in 1994. Oh, no, sure. first two albums. Yeah, a, a bad marketing idea they found out later. They're one of the greatest bands of all time, Silkworm. Uh, the movie has Jeff Tweedy from uh, Wilco in it. It has Ooh. Stephen Malmas from Pavement, uh, Steve Albini. Yeah, I'll send it to you. Uh, and it's only $5 for the rest of you, jerks. Hell I yeah. I don't know yet. Uh, but I'd like to. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> we'll get to know each other. And then uh, Mission of Burma, Clint Conley, like a ton of indie God, rock. You got, some, you got all my guys. Dude, and it was like a real I like high Clint. school reunion of every band I cared about. And it really like it really helped me. On, honest to God, it taught me about independent pursuits and why you do it. I was 23, and these guys at the end of their career basically told me like, yeah, we're not. I wouldn't change one album cover. I wouldn't change one guitar solo. I wouldn't change one lyric. Like we're proud of the work we did. We don't care. We didn't make any money. And that blew my fucking mind and really helped me in life. So, yeah. so the story is about them, but it's about indie rock and it's about perseverance in the face of uh, you know all the career shit you don't want to do. Ah, uh, um. So anyway, so it's called Couldn't You Wait: The Story of Silkworm. You can get it at Couldn't You Wait dot com, or if you go to my Twitter and that shit, it's linked there too. But, cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. See that movie? It's all about the nineties. Yeah. Check it out. So, uh, well, Seth Pomeroy, thank you so much for. Uh, so so being with fun. us, uh, we're, we're we're running it down here. We we're yeah, almost right finished, but MC. Seth's got to go. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Listeners, enjoy the next sixty-seven <laughs> yeah. hours, and I'll see you right. in a couple months. All right, uh, all right. Take care, guys. Okay. Uh, October fifth, nineteen ninety-four. 
CMA Awards in Nashville, Alan Jackson was asked to use a pre-recorded version of his song Gone Country, and he protested by having the drummer perform with no sticks. Uh, hey. So Alan Jackson. Alan Jackson kind of. Punk he, rock icon. I hope he doesn't have nightmare politics, because I really enjoy Alan Jackson <laughs> quite a bit. <laughs> yeah, I do like, too. Yeah. His singles are real strong. Love, love. And then Way Down Yonder on the Chattahoochee. Yes, yes. I dare you to not want to boogie a little to that song. Oh, a fantastic song. October 14th. Got a, got two big movies that come out October 14th, and they're both uh, pretty big. I consider one of the best documentaries ever made, Hoop Dreams, is released. Nice. On the same day. Oh, there it is. <laughs> uh, yeah. The one everybody was waiting for. The should have been, could have been, best picture winner of 1994. Because uh, I do love Forrest Gump. I'll stick Can up for I that movie. This but out? fucking, take. this is it. If Pulp Fiction wins best picture, it is a less cool movie. That's true. You yeah. know what's really cool? Not winning the award. Yeah. You know what's really cool? Getting to say have fucking dickheads like us for the rest of time <laughs> go, should have won. <laughs> like yeah, that's, I agree. That's why like you can't let things that are cool win things. It makes them less rad, everybody. Yeah, that's true. Like, okay. I mean, it at least got nominated. I yeah. mean, it, it, the, the Oscars brought the eyes to this film, I think. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Like it got yeah. it got people to see it, and that's all you want. But if it yeah. wins, then fucking everybody's around. Yeah. It's just like, what well, do you want? And it, and it did win the Palme d'Or. Yeah. Can so which you know. is the one to win? I, yeah, at the end of the day, it's the one that's uh, you know not a uh, not a joke. <laughs> I didn't see that movie until I was much older. Pulp Fiction, yeah, yeah. I did. I think it was probably early high school. Yeah, see, same here. I didn't obviously didn't see this when I was you know eight, but uh, I uh, for sure watched this. You know, around I'm going to say like 2001, 2002 yeah, era same. is like when I really like you and know as I'm sort of diving into like quote unquote like indie movies yes. and like art housey stuff and the the yeah. baby's first you know cool movie yeah yeah well I've said before I saw Royal Tenenbaums in theaters because I love Ben Stiller and then at the end of it I was like oh man this isn't like other things. And then that was like the thing that cracked it oh, open, yeah. and that would, it, you, everybody has that movie that kind of did it, for me. yeah. And you're like, oh, this is some I'm doing seen. different things. You're doing different shit. I didn't than know I've you were seen. allowed to say several of the things this movie has done. Yeah, exactly. And so Pulp Fiction would have followed right after that, yeah. because that's like one of those, you know, when you're like, oh, it's because then you, well, you, especially then there was such a like kind of like Suncoast Video Canon. Yes, you know, oh, hundred percent was, was you know those you know Memento. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and and. A movie that's coming up right now, October 19th, Clerks yep. comes out. Mm -hmm. So Clerks comes out right after Pulp Fiction. We discussed uh, I think, Kevin Smith I think a little bit it's, earlier. It's like, uh, I think it goes like Fight Club, Clerks, and then Pulp Fiction or something like that. Yeah. I saw Clerks for the first time. I was going to a summer program called the Alabama Governor's School of Arts and Technology Ooh. to uh, further my photography uh, learnings. And uh, my roommate uh, was some, I can't remember his name for the life of me because you just got paired with random person, but he put it on. I brought a Dreamcast and we played Grand Theft Auto 2 and then he was like have you ever seen clerks and we watched it and i was like oh my oh, god nice. this blew my mind uh i loved it i'm trying to remember like the order because that was that was a real like i was just starting to like really start writing for myself yeah like, i was writing stories i was trying to learn how a script worked and stuff like that when i was like 12 13 uh-huh like, because I, I loved the movie. I got, I got obsessed with the movie Scream. And it, was, oh, it yeah. was like, and then like they said, Kevin Williamson wrote this movie. And I was like, they write movies? <laughs> and then it was like, and it's like, it's funny and a horror movie. I'm like, you can be funny and kill things. <laughs> <laughs> and and from there it was like, oh, wait, well, that's a job. That's for me. Yeah. And then like finding that and just like, because I was such a little nerd boy. Right. And like co collected action figures and and loved all this old, old sci-fi shit. All the things that, that everybody claims now. Yeah. Uh, and that movie having like the Star Wars shit in it. Yes. And also all the swearing. These were all things that were new information for me that and were exciting. Cool and cool. You're yeah. like, oh, this is awesome. And it's weird because I feel like Clerks now has, as we were talking about last episode, uh, the Bill Hicks problem. It was a landmark game changing thing in yeah. its time. Right, right. That now does not hold that power. Yeah. And I yeah. keep resisting watching because like. The, the chasing Amy phenomenon is such right, a fascinating right. thing yeah, for a yeah. movie to so thoroughly invert. Yeah, yeah. Go from like, the most progressive to the one where it's like, we can't talk about this Yes, movie. yeah, exactly. And I think it's put undue force onto Clerks because, like, <laughs> everyone's like, we can't be putting prestige on mall rats. You get the fuck out of here. <laughs> yeah, Clerks, uh, I you know, I'm at this point now, and this happens all the time when we do our 
Patreon movies and stuff like that that I'm at this point now where it is amazing to me when anything happens. Yes. You know, like just the fact that any fucking movie gets made is crazy to me. Yeah. I mean, aside, you know, obviously aside from like anything that's in a, you know, heavy studio machine situation like Marvel or what have you, like those are just going to keep coming out. Made is sometimes a miracle. But just especially like a movie like that where you watch it and I am willing to bet that for good or ill this is sort of the Velvet Underground yeah, situation 100%. where like not a lot of people saw this movie, but the ones who did were like, oh, I can make movie now. It, it <laughs> is probably one of the three or four most important independent American films ever made. Yeah. Like, and it, I would say like, it's funny because Pulp Fiction is the same year. Pulp Fiction is so brilliant. Yeah. That you're like, God damn, I don't know if I could, you know, like, uh, yeah, I don't, exactly. know, I don't know if I could lace this guy's boots with clerks. You're like, oh, this is just like some bros fucking around and it's good. You know, it's uh, it sets such a template that, that yeah, that you can't make Pulp Fiction. You can't even make Reservoir Dogs. Right. Yeah, but yeah. like, but you can make clerks. Yeah. You know? And yeah. the story behind it, sexy and like nobody in it is like super hot or even like overly funny. Like, no. There is no like funniest i mean randall gets all the best lines because kevin smith wrote it for himself yeah. but like jay muse sort of pops on it i will say this i uh, when i was working at talking dead once uh-huh. uh i would finish my stuff the audience they're, they're shooting the show it's all going and one of the pas like in the middle of the taping like runs over and pulls me to the side and goes hey man i need you to like confirm something for me uh-huh. and i'm like what is it i'm pretty sure the lady who played veronica and clerks is ah, in the audience oh shit and i go and poke my head around and it's absolutely her Hell yeah. and we walk up after the show and i go i hate to bother you but can i ask you a question she says yes it's me ah. and i was like how do you know she's like look at the two of you and yeah it was yeah two heavy set white boys <laughs> with beards <laughs> Uh, and she was very, very sweet, and she took pictures. It's one of the handful of times I've taken a picture uh, with somebody. Yeah. Uh, and it was literally mostly because like me and this other guy with her is too funny because it's just a parody of a Kevin Smith. Photo. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. But yeah. like, it's I have not watched because I'm afraid it was such a like big deal movie for me, and I'm bummed if it's going to be one of those things I sort of have to sort of like pass off as a like thing. But it's also like it is very much one of those things where it's like I think I can figure out how to enjoy it in the context of like it being revolutionary. It's time. But like it is airplane food as far as like trying to recreate would be. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I, I, I'm i trying to remember the last time I saw it. It probably would have been in college, but I remember it still being funny. But it's yeah. not a movie I've seen a lot of times. But it, it's uh, I, I, I maintain it's weird when you look at like the Kevin Smith machine because he creates an entire vein of comedy that then immediately destroys the need for him to exist. Yeah. Yeah. It is wild. When you look at Jay and Silent Bob strike back to anchor man, it's such a short amount of time. (laughs) And in that amount of time, it is just like, like you would put Kevin Smith style of comedy into a vat of acid (laughs) and just watch it fully (laughs) melt like something out of metalocalypse. And and that, but then Apatow will fail everything afterwards owes it being palatable to a wide audience because of Kevin Smith who reaps nothing. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. November 1st, the domain name amazon.com is registered. Ooh. Uh, the company had been founded back in July with the name Cadabra, but Bezos decided Solid call. <laughs> Bezos decided to change the name because a lawyer misheard its original name as Cadaver. Again, could have been fun. Nothing bad will happen following this founding. People just going to buy some books. Yep. That exact same day. (laughs) Fucking Wildflowers by Tom Petty is released. Tom Petty's second solo album. Uh, But, you know, it it only serves... It only serves to make it confusing when you're looking for shit on Spotify or Apple Music that they're broken up into Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers and Tom Petty, where you're like... You type in Tom Petty. It's like Neil Young. Yeah. Neil Young we're, problem. we're like, come on, man. Just put, let's get it into one. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's. I didn't realize. That. I thought this was an 80s song for some reason. <laughs> this is exactly what I was going to say. This is my whole thing. And I, I, I may have said this, but I don't care. My thesis with Tom Petty, and I, I witnessed this. Tom Petty is the, as far as I know, to the point you can talk, but I'm assuming I think he, I, oh, let's go. Another joint. Now we're back. All right, we're back. Uh, but <laughs> you're talking about uh, like, that roll of joint lines coming up. <laughs> yeah. Well, and then of course, when they censored it, the noink, uh, which is the weirdest edit I've ever heard where they flip joint backwards. Uh, let's roll another noink. Uh, Tom Petty is the only artist that I can think of that when he released new music, it immediately went to classic rock yes, stations. 100%. Like, I thought 
like you, because Free Fallen was just, I became conscious, and Free Fallen was a song that yes. was on the air. It came out in 1989. Wait, really? Yeah, and I thought it was from the fucking 70s. You know, I thought it was like an early 80s, but like it a post. Is, I thought it was like post uh, Fast Time. It's on not, Full Moon Fever, crazy. 1989. Holy and, shit! Yeah, and this is 1994. And what's the? There's another one in that run too, because there's the one with the Alice in Wonderland video. Uh, that's uh, Last Dance with Mary Jane. Uh, or no, no, you're, no, you're, no, you're thinking of Southern Accents. That's way yes. before. Yeah, oh, that that's is before. Yeah, okay. yeah, because that's uh, that's don't come around here no more. That's it. Okay. No, this. Uh, yeah, this this time period is is weird. I can't well, think of another artist like that. Who, I also I can't think of an artist who has such a consistent sound to their music through their entire... Like, you yeah. can play American Girl, This, and Last DJ, yeah, and yeah. they can all be off one goddamn record. That's true. And there were always flourishes of whatever's happening at the time period, like... You know, I always think of like Breakdown has that amazing blues guitar riff, but then there's also the little like kind of synth piano I thing happening that that's so meow, cool. Meow. Yeah, so he was always moving with the times, but for whatever reason, and I think some of it had to have been due to the fact that he made the Traveling Wilburys records with all the old guys. Oh, interesting. And so he just got in the Pantheon by association with Dylan, Jeff Lynn, and George Harrison. Like yeah. they, somehow, and Roy Orbison, that somehow just like made him a classic rock artist. But yeah, they used to play this, but they would also play him on like the alternative stations too. I, I find that like he is somebody who that legacy is only going to get bigger and crazier over time. Oh, yeah. Like, I, yeah. I think that despite him being a beloved American artist, I think Tom Petty might be one of the most like still underrated yeah. like popular rock and roll artists of all time. Oh, yeah. Uh, the, here's, here's a uh, here's a, uh, a, a COVID-era confession of the most cliche thing I did. Ooh. I drove out to Antelope Valley uh, to the uh, to the poppy fields. Oh, shit. And I, I had my little AirBuds, AirPods there and I threw on the... I was like, oh, wildflowers. I should put on wildflowers. And I That's wandered great. around a field an endless field of orange poppies listening to this record and it was that sounds transcendent it was cliche and the most transcendent thing I've ever done and I apologize I for love nothing I love that shit like <laughs> also released the same day and I'm not gonna play it uh, to, uh, to spare all of our uh, listeners but Mariah Carey released All I Want for Christmas is You ah. on that day, uh, which everyone's heard that fucking song. Wild but. watching that song be a thing and then go away and, and then, then come then back as the biggest really, song ever. Really be a thing. Shout out to My Chemical Romance <laughs> for that great cover. <laughs> November 5th, 1994, MGM Grand Garden Arena in Las Vegas. 46-year-old George Foreman comes out of retirement Ooh. and knocks out 26-year-old Michael Moore in the 10th round to become the oldest world champion in boxing history. And this is also the year that the George Foreman grill is introduced. 94? <laughs> Wait, what? It, really? Yep. It is estimated that Foreman has made over $200 million from the endorsement, a sum that is substantially more than he ever earned as a boxer. I mean, it's the lean, vein, fat-reducing <laughs> machine. Grilling machine. Yeah, indeed. Hi, I'm George Foreman, and this is my lean, mean, fat-reducing grilling machine. It grills delicious food in a healthy way, fast. The George Foreman grill cooks from both sides at once, cutting most cooking times in half. It's also healthier cooking, because the slanted grill channels fat and grease away from food. Seared outside, moist inside. It's perfect for cooking steak, fish, burgers, and vegetables. The great features of my grill will make meal times faster and easier in your home. Yeah, what a year for the, George, man. What comedy club is it in New York that famously made sandwiches, but it was just the person at the desk had a <laughs> foreman grill? <laughs> <laughs> oh man forget where that is but that was real famous there was a comedy club at one point that sounds like kitchen uh, was just that yeah yeah was it pay to play i'm sure it was pay to play uh, right yeah <laughs> yeah that's uh because george horman you know they had the uh the rumble in the jungle i believe mm -hmm. and uh you know muhammad ali kind of uh embarrassed him a little bit sort of did what he did here uh you know the old guy beat the young guy george foreman went away for a long time decided to get back into it came out on top november 8th 1994 midterm elections republicans pick up 10 governorships eight senate seats 54 seats in the house newt gingrich would be sworn as the next speaker of the house and uh it's not like uh, this is going to happen again very soon or anything it's, uh man <laughs> member member newt <laughs> Fuck New Gingrich, dude. That guy sucks ass. Monsters were a little cute. Uh, God. They, they say he won because he had this uh, contract with America, which, uh, you know, reduced voting rights and ripped down social safety nets. So, yeah, uh, yeah that's a good, good thing to do. Um, November 11th, 1994. Interview with a vampire. 
and the Santa Claus come oh. out on the same day. Uh, Saw the Santa wild. Claus in theaters so at the drive-in. Every time I say theaters, I mean drive-in. Yeah, because uh, it was cheaper for my parents to take this movie-loving boy to a drive-in. Oh shit! Yeah, you went, you actually went to a real drive-in. Oh, drive-in, drive-in. They, it, the Simi drive-in existed until '96. Seven? Oh man, hell yeah. Yeah, that but that's a and then Interview with a Vampire I also have not watched in a very long time. Same. That's one of those like the kid with the parents that didn't give a shit what they watched. Yeah. That seems like that's a movie I saw. My there. aunt <laughs> encouraged me to watch it because she's a big vampire nut. Oh, they, she's like and, the Anne Rice Mark. Yeah, and so so because I have her copy of the book too. I've always meant to read the book. Like I always yeah. felt like like People can blah, blah, blah about Anne Rice or whatever, but like I'm curious just because she's a horror prominent horror writer I've never read anything from. So yeah. I always feel like I should give one just to be a better rounded <laughs> horror reader. Check out the story of Al Copeland, founder of Popeye's Chicken on our YouTube and his feud with Anne Rice. One of the funniest things yeah. that's ever happened. <laughs> November 15th, uh, Warcraft, Orcs and Humans is released. Wait, really? Yeah, that's when the very first Warcraft comes out. See, this out. is good that the cool kids are gone, so I can uh-huh. really react to that. Yeah, like, yeah, absolutely. Wild. I never played Warcraft of any kind, so you I, I tell was me a, about it. I was a Warcraft 2 kid. Oh, uh, okay, like, yeah. But uh, it was... So I was not allowed to play video games that weren't educational until like 1996. Oh shit! Okay. So like we, I was had learning company computer games. As the closest say. I got was a Page Master game that was like a rip off of Miss. That was the first video game I ever. You beat. couldn't stop math blasting. I could not. I was more of a super seeker with those reading ones because math was hard. <laughs> did SimCity count as educational? No, it did not. Oh, no, fuck. I was. It was hard out there. Wow. And so eventually, I had a cousin. Because eventually I had a, a an old computer that they had upgraded from, and I got I had that sitting around, uh-huh. and my cousin went in and put a bunch of like shareware games and shit on there, and put like Doom and Duke Nukem and Rise of the Triad and fucking Warcraft and a couple shit. other things on there in like a little folder. So I had like secret video games. Hell yeah! And so like like yeah, Warcraft was one of those ones, and it was just like I'd never seen it because it's like a strategy game. And yeah, I'd never really seen something like that, and I didn't grow up with fantasy stuff, so I didn't know what an orc was. So I'm like, this is fun. <laughs> so and what I was obsessed with is it had a level builder. So even more than playing the game, I would just like build big lines of heroes and big lines of monsters and then just have them fight and see who survived. Oh, man. Hell yeah. That exact same day. I mean, crazy, <laughs> sexy, sexy, cool. cool. Yes, this my girl dominated uh, my childhood. Fucking love TLC. This is the fucking and they ride for the A ATL in mm. the fucking house. This, this back the wah guitar oh, like this is this is la face at its pinnacle fucking <laughs> yeah yeah although you know this is organized noise is who, it? yeah they did this whole record I, they were they were working I for la face like sexy music fuck yeah they did yeah this is the same people who put together southern playlistic earlier in the year this is which is a different kind of fucking music yeah yeah definitely but uh oh god what a yeah what a year man uh, <laughs> just this, uh love dlc yeah and this is not uh, this is the big hit obviously yeah my favorite tune on the record is creep yeah creep is uh, fu- i'm torn that that goes back and forth for me <laughs> fuck radiohead like, like yeah take radiohead's creep and Plays throw it the, throw it into the sun so that's organized noise too then so they just like Man, that's a fun period where they're just like, what if we took 70s music and slowed it down? They were, they were running oh. running ATL, man. Yeah, anything that was coming out of uh, LaFace. You're LaFace. Doing the Lord's work. Yeah, it they, was, they, it was the all Teddy those guys. Riley got tired, and they're like, our turn. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, three days later. Hey, <laughs> don't uh, go yeah. phony calls. Phony calls, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, three days after that, Donkey Kong Country is hey. released. Uh, uh, <laughs> Speaking of dorky moments, uh, I was talking about the book Console Wars earlier in this run. I don't know if it was this episode or last episode. Uh-huh. It could be anything. Time's a flat circle. Yeah. There's a great dorky moment that's very much, it's the same trick that works for me in music biographies. This does too, where they show the head of Nintendo, because it's rare, this company that's not from Japan made Donkey Kong Country. Yeah, sure. And uh, they bring in the, the, the Nintendo guy, you know, and show him Donkey Kong Country behind closed doors. And it's the first time he's seen any of it. And he turns, and because he was also getting demos of the Nintendo 64. Those were both like being worked on in tandem. And he turns to the guy shaking and goes, 
are all the Nintendo 64 games going to look this good? Uh -huh. And they all smile and go, this is for Super Nintendo. Oh, and like no. broke his brain. Oh, yeah. And so they, and it's just, it's such a fun dorky moment as you're going through the yeah. book and you're just like, he doesn't even know. Yeah. Oh, well, dude. Uh, yeah. When Donkey Kong came out, I never had a Super Nintendo. I'm, uh, did I. I was like a Sega guy, not on my own. Accord. I was not just... allowed to own a system until the 64. <laughs> Shit, I had to yeah. buy it myself. It was great. But those moments in KB Toys or Toys R Us mm -hmm. where they have the display, for seemingly until the N64 comes out, yep. it was always Donkey Absolutely. Kong Country on display. So I played the shit out of that game in toy stores. Like my mom would just, you know, if we went to the mall, it's like, oh, go look around KB Toys. And I was like, all right. And then I would just be at that Donkey Kong station. And I'm still not good at it, but it was fun as hell. Whereas I was in that store busy buying liquidated Marvel action figures. Oh, yeah. There you go. There was a real pipeline, whereas they'd get thrown <laughs> from other places. You could go and pick them up there for cheaper. It was <laughs> a nice hustle. Uh, speaking of which, the next day, uh, Spider Man premieres on Fox Kids Network. Hey. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I believe Joe Perry of Aerosmith did the theme. Uh, and it, this is from at uh, Comic Fanboy 616. Didn't know where else to put this one, but this is definitely a Kyle question. Who can forget when it was told to readers that Peter Parker wasn't actually Spider-Man? During an industry-wide collapse, Marvel pulled a stunt to get a now-married and soon-to-be father Spider-Man by replacing Peter with his clone, Ben Riley. Yes. Oh, well aware of that. It's a crazy run. Uh, I, I will be honest. I was just telling somebody recently, I got bored and put together a pitch for a Ben Riley Spider-Man reboot thing. Oh, sh okay. That, uh, that Wait, he's a clone? I, I, didn't, yes. I didn't. So it's there's a whole... like. So Marvel starts to go so bankrupt. We, have you ever done an episode on the the, the comic book fucking bust? No, because that's no. a wild story. Okay, um, because like the 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 speculator market happens, and that's the whole everybody's buying a million copies, of everything, and there's all these issue ones, and yeah. it, you know X Men number one sells a million copies or whatever, and it's wild. Because it's the same kind of thing that always happens with comic books. They may be doing it with Marvel films right now, uh -huh. where they figure out a thing that makes some money, yeah. and then they grind it into the ground until they've <laughs> taken every nickel from you. And then when they don't understand why people aren't buying an unsustainable amount of product, they go, well, let's really fuck it up then for a while. And see if that spices it up. <laughs> Redo and it. it leads to several of the kind of shittiest arcs in the history of Marvel comics are all these kind of mid to late 90s runs, yeah. where they're just trying to like, get you to pay attention by doing something and like all of them are kind of like lame and yeah. thirsty and this this one it went on for like two years <laughs> and then it ends up being kind of a wet fart of an ending where they're like this very obscure villain was behind it the whole time and he's like <laughs> fucking two years of my life nine <laughs> spider-mans 11,000 different books i had to read for this so i could find out the motherfucking jackal was dicking with spider-man this whole time <laughs> fuck you and like it marvel goes bankrupt in 1997 right, right. Uh, and and literally gets bought by toy biz the company that made their toys was doing better than them and bought uh, them <laughs> and it's this whole complicated thing because then they they start rebuilding in about 2000 2001 when i start really reading comics is in the way where like joe casada comes in and, and sort of saves marvel right uh, and leads it into the beast it is today but within all that, yeah, it's it's Ben Riley is this weird thing where they're just like Spider Man's boring now. Let's make sure there's what if there was a different Spider Man? He becomes the Scarlet Spider, who's a cool design because he's the first Spider Man to be wearing a hoodie. Okay, <laughs> all right. As uh, would go on to be popular with Spider Gwen and Mister Miles Morales. Gotcha. November twenty eighth, Jeffrey Dahmer is beaten to death in jail with a metal <laughs> rod. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, that inanimate carbon rod. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, December 6, 1994, Orange County, California declares bankruptcy. That's why the Sky Revival had to happen. It had to financially secure Orange County for another decade. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They declare bankruptcy, and the same day... <laughs> Ooh, yeah. 16 Stone by Bush. One of the 90s bands I genuinely don't like. <laughs> Them and Live might be the end of the list. <laughs> yeah, not a lot of bangers uh, left in I this will, year. I will say this. One friend of mine did show me one of the funniest things in the world. A friend of his who was good at editing audio uh, knew he fucking hated this song. Yeah. And made a mix where the first five songs were this. <laughs> and then and it, and then the last one of the... Or, no, they were all this. And then one of the tracks just wasn't even the song. It was just breathe in, breathe out, spread over uh. five and a half minutes. <laughs> and then finally there was another song. And then in the middle it cut out and added the breathe ins back in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Guy Rosdale would go on to tell Keanu Reeves he was finger licking good in the movie Constantine. 
<laughs> Jesus Christ. My, never let him act again. <laughs> my uh, memory of this song goes to our uh, prom in 2004, Ooh. where uh, they had a cover band doing this song, and me and all my friends decided to give them the show of their life by getting as close to them as we could and rocking so fucking Fuck yeah. hard that they got into it, you know, because they didn't know we were kind of like ironically doing it. And then we uh, dropped the irony part, and we were just actually really getting Rocking into uh, yeah, Machine Head by Bush off of off of this album. It's a uh Bush are such an int- they're they're kind of the end of of like nineties alternative rock in some yeah way. well like, like the grunge era ends with Bush and well I was more say, than Candlebox even it's it's interesting that Orange County goes broke on this day because it's sort of a reset button yes. for them because they're about to take over with Absolutely. with no doubt Sublime all the shit that's about to happen hey, towards the end Long Beach so it's not, like, is that Orange County okay we'll close enough Sublime out close enough uh, but <laughs> yeah <laughs> one town away uh, but yeah point is like it's kind of perfect that it's like oh this yeah, it, this it, last it, gasp of whatever the fuck this music is it, it's that we again man i i gotta do a screen of hypes up somewhere just because uh-huh. there's, there's so many shorthands i have about culture that just come from that movie <laughs> but yeah bush is a, a, a weird bit they, it's them in silver chair that i feel like oh. always get thrown under the bus and i'm not saying they shouldn't be under any buses but uh, no, like, sure. it's definitely like part of that run of like by the time you get to handsome boys with gravelly voices the party's over right right uh, December 9th, 1994, Surgeon General Jocelyn Elders is forced to resign from the Clinton administration. She's so fucking cool, by the way. Uh, she argued for an exploration of the possibility of drug legalization, opposed abstinence-only sex education. This is the lady who famously got fired for saying, and I quote, I think that masturbation is something that is part of human sexuality, and it's part of something that perhaps should be taught, but we've not even taught our children the very basics. I feel that we've tried ignorance for a very long time, and it's time we try education. And that is what she was fired for saying. Yeah. Because well, being like, she hey. She was interrupting their breeding stuff. I know. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's, uh, it'll always, uh, I, I have to sometimes just sing a little song in my head to not think about how the fact that we're like, you know what's great is making sure everyone can get a gun and no one knows how to fuck anybody. Uh, dude, yes. And it is like, she is everybody doesn't understand how to do drugs yeah she was like that was her famous thing and like every late night show was like oh she's like the jack off lady and you're like no that's true that makes sense everything like this is her on handguns handguns are a public health issue i agree this is her on abortion we really need to get over this love affair with the fetus and start worrying about children i want every child that's born in the world to be planned and wanted reasonable yeah fucking insanely reasonable and they made her quit yeah uh and then she has a great joke here we know that more than 70 to 80 percent of women masturbate and 90 percent of men masturbate and the rest are liars yes which is she sounds great she's got bars man yeah she rules uh yeah look her up man because she is that's a that's a real american hero she's one of those people you're just like man you got done so fucking dirty maybe the only surgeon to believe an american hero was done dirty (laughs) yeah yeah, exactly yeah (laughs) we don't throw them away like garbage yeah yeah this is i think the only person in the clinton administration that i still respect <laughs> i think at this late date she's the one person where i'm like you know what that every you could throw out every last person in that fucking administration except for jocelyn elders yeah shout out to we a hero. respect you yeah december 10th 1994 an advertising executive named thomas moser returned from a business trip to his home in north caldwell new jersey and began sorting the mail that had piled up in his absence scanning through the unopened letters <gasps> he noticed a neatly wrapped package Addressed to, his, addressed to his old employer, a public relations firm called Bruno Marsteller. Despite the fact that the sender, whose address Moster did not recognize, had misspelled the company's name, he oh, decided to open it. Shed. <laughs> he decided to open it. Instantly, a violent explosion shook the house and Moster was killed. Upon analyzing the bomb, the FBI discovered that it bore the trademarks of a mysterious bomber that they had been tracking for nearly 15 years. Because his chosen targets were university professors and airline officials, they had taken to calling him Unibomb. The Unibomber had injured 23 others up until this point, but this was only his second murder. So, all right, I'll get into it for a second. Ladies and gentlemen, (laughs) maybe the most controversial episode of my podcast I've ever produced is also an episode that I 100% stand behind, Mm -hmm. but despite it being very intense upon pitch, 
Uh, my dear friend uh, Jason Van Glass uh, approached us with an idea years ago about an episode about this is rad about industrial technology te- technologies and their future. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and their future, which is the writings of Ted Kaczynski. Yeah, yeah. Now the reason that we ended up doing the episode because on my show the rule we have is it has to be something that that you can say is rad. It has to have a positive yeah. spin to it, like because there's <laughs> pl- already plenty of podcasts that are very very negative. Sure. So. Uh, we had to figure it out. And the way that we did so is this. I'm not going to use the word recommend. <laughs> I would offer that if you are interested, if you look at even a summary of what industrial technologies and its future contains, yeah. it almost perfectly lists out the systematic destruction of the agriculture industry in the United States and the world at large yeah. to a hauntingly accurate degree that is only getting truer over time. Yeah. yeah. Now, what I have not said is mail bombs to people and that I approve of such activities. Right, I right. don't. I'm against it. Hot yeah. take. Do not think that was the right way to approach the problem. Understand the frustration that may lead one there. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. it's it's uh, I I it has become the older I get, the more it has become a fascinating thing because like Ted Kaczynski is maybe one of the most complicated figures in like yeah. American crime. <laughs> and it got so much worse when they put up that Netflix documentary where it's like the killer in his own words. Because I had never heard his voice before. And as soon as you hear his voice, you're like, oh, he's like an annoying yeah. edgelord yeah. fucking dork. And you just hate him. But then you're right. Like, you read that and you're like, yeah, like he raises some good points. It's very similar to his, the, it, it's like like a lot of manifestos, Chris Dorner, yeah. where you're like, where he's like, yes, the, the cops do profile people racially. Less uh, uh, Chappelle and Jeff Ross shout outs. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Social sciences in their future. Yeah, so. yeah, no, no shout out, no <laughs> he calls. Doesn't, he doesn't give big ups to Louis Hillary Clinton. <laughs> he doesn't tell them not to make Hangover 3. Uh, <laughs> I fucking forgot that's about my that. Favorite. Holy shit. He's like, I, I'm sad. I'm, he's like, I'm sad I'm not going to see Hangover 3, but honestly, you guys shouldn't have made more than yeah, one. Yeah, man. <laughs> that's, that's just that is. Is the best manifesto though oh it's like, hilarious the, not not quite as prescient but uh, but not not prescient yeah exactly but it's that thing of like you get to the very end and then it's like and therefore i must kill everyone you're like well hold on whoa hold on, hold on. what <laughs> well <laughs> still mean, don't like there's other ways probably maybe i don't know um yeah so anyway. this is what we do when everybody you know bomber yeah <laughs> <laughs> if you leave kyle to be a lone guest he'll start tacitly <laughs> approving of terrorism <laughs> december 18th 1994 life with louis premieres on one of my Fox favorite kids. cartoons as a kid r.i.p louis anderson uh tr- one of the true greats yeah i love the show i think it is one of the best comedian adapting their life series ever it, it's truly go find some clips there is uh some really great people who are preserving a lot of kids cartoons on the internet uh <laughs> and uh, you know the big work but i appreciate it and there's there's been some ones that have saved that it what a great show uh and finally december 31st 1994 dick clark's new year's rock and eve once again now hosted on, by blind melon the co-hosted by steve harvey and margaret cho not bad i'll take that <laughs> what a, that's crazy uh, right. cho was so young what a mashup <laughs> <laughs> what a what a match! I realize uh, I have no idea what Margaret Cho's age is uh-huh, because yeah. she still looks twenty five. Uh-huh, yeah, yeah. Like, I, I don't know that I've ever met a comedian who has aged better than Margaret Cho. <laughs> my God! So it's like, and I hear that I'm like, oh my God, that was like a grown up doing that. Uh, uh, the lineup that night, uh, unsurprisingly, Hootie and the Blowfish. They only uh, want to be with us. Salt and Pepper. They're gonna push it. John Cicada. I don't know. Melissa Etheridge. She came to our window. And the OJ's. <laughs> <laughs> which now considering what happened with orenthal james simpson earlier in the year that's a funny were book were they trolling the absolutely us, right like they kind there of is a funny executive behind that and i let me say i love the oj it's a philly soul i revere the ojs but in 1994, there's no reason to book the OJs other than the, the OJs. Have the, OJs. To know. the OJs saw that chase. <laughs> yeah, yeah. like this is either going to be terrible <laughs> or phenomenal for us. <laughs> we don't know how this is going to go. Uh, but uh, more importantly, Boston, Massachusetts, Boston Garden Fish had just begun their third <gasps> oh. set of the evening. Uh, so they played a uh, massive New Year's Eve show, one of the most legendary fish shows of all time. So they were playing their third set when all of a sudden they were interrupted by huge props of a hot dog, fries and shakes descending from the ceiling next to the drum set. The band played the theme from 2001 A Space Odyssey while the hot dog landed. The band climbed inside of the hot dog with their instruments and flew out over the audience as balloons popped and feathers, confetti and ping pong balls fell from the ceiling. 
Captain Beefheart's tropical hot dog night played over the PA as the hot dog spaceship flew back and forth. Mike Gordon's grandmother jumped on the stage with a shoe in her hand. Look, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> I know that a large percentage of you just heard that, and that was the stupidest bullshit you ever I know. heard. Yeah. To me... That sounds awesome, and we should go yeah. to that right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the reason that I, sounds like the finest entertainment money can buy. I included that description for the same reason I included the description of the Undertaker's match in the first part because it's like, yeah, it's entertainment. It's like, yeah, it's dumb, but it's entertaining. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, also clearly they had gone to a Garth Brooks show at that point, mm-hmm. and we're like, how can we swing out over the crowd but make it seem like we're not, uh, you know, just copying Garth? They're like, let's get in a hot dog. Uh, so and, and meanwhile, Gene Simmons is going. I invented flying over the audience. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So <laughs> and then I did it right after I told a woman to shut up <laughs> and then beat up some poor people. <laughs> He's going to be president next. Oh God! Don't even say. I think he was born in Israel. I oh. think we're safe. I think he's... I hate how much genuine, non-ironic <laughs> relief that just filled me with. Because <laughs> I've had that thought before. I'm like, is there anybody else I could think that I would hate to see president <laughs> Would more? be worse. Yeah. And it's Gene Simmons. <laughs> yeah. Love Paul Stanley. Saw Ace Freely recently. Oh, like, yeah. Like, having a great time with all that. Just one man there is made of pure <laughs> evil. <laughs> yeah, he was born in Israel, so we're safe. Oh, my yeah. God. I hate how happy that makes me. <laughs> uh, but yeah, after uh, reading that description, one has to assume the Flaming Lips were in the crowd. Oh, God, uh, yes. <laughs> but anyway, that... Is 1994. We made it. We did it. Oh my God. In just a hair under five hours. I was about to check. I was going to see how, because this round, okay, okay. This is, you uh, know, this is, uh, yeah, for those this listening, is we started at 2 30 <laughs> and it is now 8 15 at night. Hell yeah. Man. This is, and again, I, I am so wired on Candy Mountain Dew. I could do this for days. Yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. Me too. Uh, well, bring 95 on. We're getting closer to Twister with every one of these. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, we got to figure out what. Wow, we got to figure out which one to do next time. We have a couple of ideas. Yeah, we got some uh, ideas. For those listening, Rivers and I have talked about how this is, I, I, like, on some level, the best thing we do. <laughs> yeah, it's Like, so this fun. is the most qualified piece of media that the two of us can yeah, do. Yeah, 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 exactly. It's yeah. a thing that could not sustain as a series whatsoever. No, no. Well, you know what's funny with this is, like, the first time we did this was for episode 199 with uh, Luke Jensen, and we did 1999, just because the numbers yeah. and that kind of thing. And then after I was finished with it, I realized that I had a similar idea for this when I was doing college radio. Oh, interesting. About doing a show called New Year's Eve every week and pretending it was a New Year's Eve party. Oh, that's fucking right. And then playing whatever the music was from that thing. And then this is just like bringing in, you know, expanding it into like comedy topics where it's like, oh, I'll I can do more than just music. But yeah, what yeah. what I love about it is like, I, you know, I was talking about my old show Retro Rad before, and this is sort of like I can take all the same bullshit trivia that lives in my brain same. for all these things. And like it gives it even a little bit more structure than retro I did because instead of picking like a theme, it's it literally it's like chronology. And I it, like there is something about like chronological, like cultural exploration. Yeah, where it's like, oh, the same day, these things that I've heard my entire life all just came into existence. And I find bizarre. it so comforting because you really see that the world is never full of a ton of novelty. No. Like, no. we're doing the same five shitty things in various <laughs> combinations. Yeah. That's the fun part is doing the politics section. Because when I put these together, I'll just, you know, I'd go music first, put them in a timeline. TV, put them in the same timeline and kind of, like, organize it like that. And then I go through, you know, murder stuff, just things I yeah. like, you know, murder TV movies. Uh <laughs> And whenever I get to the politics section, I'm like, oh, we're uh, either starting the shit we're dealing with now or it's the exact same shit we're dealing with yeah. now. I, I found, uh, I mean, this is kind of probably, I did a Red Chuck Lashman's The 90s. Uh-huh. And I found it, to, I mean, I fucking, I'll read anything that some of bitch writes. Sure. Uh, but like, I found a weird comfort in, it's not feeling like, oh, we're less fucked, but more of just a, okay, like this is not, we all pretend like we just learned about the Beatles. Yeah. yeah like, and nobody else has ever heard of the Beatles before. So we got to shout to everybody how good the Beatles are. <laughs> and it turns out the Beatles have been around for a long time. <laughs> so, yeah. so, and so. if you don't know, now you know. You know, you know. Kyle, where can people find you? Uh, I am at Kyle Clark is rad on Twitter and Instagram. I literally only use Twitter to have conversations with people about podcast stuff. So Same. if you got follow ups, that is the reason to tell you won't you don't have to deal with any tweets. Yeah. Uh, Instagram, yeah. I have my, my comedy and show dates and my art on there. Uh, I have a podcast called This Is Rad, where we talk about things that are rad. I have shamelessly hoarded this episode already. <laughs> hey, that's okay. Uh, Rivers has been on many, 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 many episodes. So go Absolutely. and give a listen to literally any of his. 
Uh, he was just recently on our summer rad block. That was oh, a lot yeah. of fun in a in a real mayhem episode. It yeah, is, it yeah. Is Seth from this episode, <laughs> uh, Joe K, who knows his way around these podcasts. Absolutely, uh, we have ourselves a time. Uh, I have a show called Everything Scary. It's a fun little show about horror movies with Jen Saunderson and Amy Drolet. Uh, and then I will I will uh, promo the I have two records out there. They're Absolute Terror and I'm a Person. They're both on anywhere where you stream comedy. Uh, feel free to uh, go give those a listen. Hell yeah. Well, uh, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Rivers Langley. You can follow the show on Twitter at The Goods Pod. Every episode ever, plus tons of clips dropping all the time at youtube.com slash the goods pod the best way to support the show head to patreon.com slash the goods pod join the tower of power the second best way to support the show head to apple podcasts rate review and subscribe show that attitude of gratitude because if you do not have the attitude of gratitude daddy we are not cleaning the woodstock 94 mud out of your base cabinet The Goods from the Woods was recorded and edited by me, Rivers Langley. You can find our show on Twitter at The Goods Pod. Our theme song was composed by Jonas the Space Cowboy. This was a Brain Freeze podcast. <laughs>